Hey everybody, welcome to yet another Procrastinators podcast interview. Long, long fucking time coming, this one. That's right. I'm finally interviewing the the man behind the channel, really. <laughs> yeah, Best the man guy behind ever. the curtain. Definitely, well, you're like, it's like actually an official position now. You are the manager of the channel. You always kind of yeah. were, but now it's like we actually have like a documentation that you get paid to be that guy. That's true, and I... I'm underpaid for all the work I do, but I, I understand that, and it's a passion project anyway, so I'm cool with it. So what is it with the, like, what the hell is the deal with the, you get these fucking feet away from me, you fucking dude. <laughs> I got uh, my feet up sticking over his face, okay. Um, <laughs> We're the same room, by the way, he's visiting my house. Yeah. There, there you go, yeah. yeah. Visiting Cincinnati. Not doing video, because it's three fucking hours long, yeah. and, you know. It's uh, a hassle. Who the fuck wants to render three hours? Who wants to look presentable for three hours? That's the real thing. We've I don't both wanna... got our pants like riding all the way up into our crotches and shit, trying to expose as much leg as <laughs> hey, possible. Hey, maybe that's a problem for you, dude. I look good as fuck. House. Everyone loves my legs. Check that Arrow manga video. Yeah, the that's people true. love it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nate, you essentially started the PCP. True. Uh, well, you 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 you're Fun. the one who sort of. I guess we all had this idea that it would happen that yeah. we would have a podcast together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we kind of sussed it out. You're the one who sort of took charge, started the channel. Yep. And you've been on every episode but one. The one that Nino was on. Yeah. <laughs> racist. <laughs> Nate is a goddamn racist. Uh, yeah, I would have been there too if I had. I was out of town in like Washington or something at the time. And the, the funny thing about it is that like even though you've kind of been like even though you run the channel, you've been on every episode, you yep. clearly have the most investment. It. I don't think anybody realized it. Like, until we started yeah. doing the Patreon, because we created, or you created, probably, a, I a, did it all, a, man. <laughs> a table of, uh, like, who all had been on every episode, and you're on all of them. We were like, what the fuck? Oh, that like, actually wasn't me. That The credit for that goes to the, uh, like, the fans, the, the PCP oh, okay. fan chat. They were the ones who actually made that. But, yeah, it was, it was interesting to look back at it and see how... Nate on every single one except for except so for one. So what is it like? I want to know why. Like, why are you so into the PCP? Because nobody else seems to give a fuck about it. <laughs> it's true. It's really simple, dude. It's really simple. It's that um, I see all of you guys as incredibly valuable resources that I am interested in maintaining. <clears throat> excuse me, a uh, a relationship with for you know for whatever purposes. And so you know because you know we've been saying for a long time. We've said this countless times, but like. We are interested in the idea of doing projects together in general. Yeah. And uh, the PCP is like one, just it's just an excuse to like keep us together. Right. To, to keep us doing stuff and um, involved in each other's shit. Because, you know, as you've seen, like I'm the guy who generally pushes for what little space for collabs there is between yeah. us, like in the Monster Musume video and stuff. Yeah. So uh, I, I'm I'm more than anybody because you know like my my dream job is what Red Letter Media does having a crew running shit you know making stuff like having a it's like they've got a life living with their friends doing exactly what they want to do and I don't know like they divvy up the work and the profits amongst themselves and they've got incentive to succeed and and play the game well and that seems to me like the perfect life so out of purely selfish reasons I'm interested in keeping everybody together these people who are very talented you know all you guys. And uh, have these skills that many of which I don't have that are, you know, we fill each other's holes and stuff in a very gay way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Extra gay. <laughs> so. Let me emphasize I mean, that. To that's right. Please. Uh, and that's really the long and short of it. You know, I. Because like before the PCP, uh, before we started that, like we weren't doing anything together and we were hanging out in the fan chat or not yeah. just, you know, like a chat that we called procrastinators. And right. that was fine. Uh, but, and, you know, we've been saying, like, hey, we should do a podcast, we should I do mean, a podcast. I mean, we had done podcasts together before. The horse cast Which whatnot. is sort of how we understood that we would all... Right. Like, because the horse cast were great, mm-hmm. and we all loved them, yep. and we all thought that they were worthwhile, so it was like, obviously, we could do this together. It was just that someone had to, like, go through the rigmarole of making a fucking channel, and, like, right. naming it, and doing all that shit, and, and just knowing that's that what it... I'm good at, actually doing the shit yeah. no one wants to do. And it was a question of, like, how interested is any like whose channel is this going to be on and if it's its own channel right. how are we going to grow it yeah like is any of our individual audiences going to care because mm-hmm. um there's sort of a push and pull with the pcp where this is like the greatest advantage and the greatest problem with it mm-hmm. is that it inherently causes people to associate all of us with each other right and right. this is like the benefit of that is that um you know, we have lots of cross promotion. If we do collabs, that people get it. People can become a fan of us as a group and stuff like that. 
Uh, but then the negative parts are like that we just kind of get sucked into one another's enigma in a way, you yeah, know, like yeah. – uh, there's ways that our channels are all different and they shouldn't necessarily be like having the same viewership and stuff like that. It's right, right. And so in a way it was a question at times, like especially in the beginning of like, well, I'm friends with best guy ever. Mm -hmm. If we make a podcast, that makes perfect sense to each of us. Sure. But our audiences might have no idea who one another are. Mm -hmm. Um, like, for me, the biggest problem with doing a podcast with you and Jesse in particular is mm -hmm. that you guys are very edgy. Uh, not, like, yeah. intentionally. I don't mean to say, like, Remember oh, our Kill a Kill one back in the day that you had yeah. to put the big disclaimer at the beginning of? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, just, like, the w what I mean by edgy is, like, not like you're going out of your way to be, but just that, like, you guys have no filter. Yeah. And I had always had, like, much more of a, you know... I, I never tried to be, like, politically incorrect, to, right, to put right. it simply. Um, especially back then, because I was coming out of the pony days. And sure. I was, like, I was borderline SJW in some ways, you know. Uh -huh. Like, not that I... I believe in joking about other stuff. You mm. know, I believe, like, hey, I don't have to think this stuff to talk about it. And now I do, like, insufferable social media argument, which is right, beyond right. the you've, impossible You've had your level. journey along this yeah. road, yeah. But, well, just because I see it as, like, if people don't get it, fuck them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not our job to make it understandable for them. Mm -hmm. um, but back then I was like, a lot of my audience isn't going to get this. They're going to hear the constant misogyny jokes yeah. and be like... Uh, I don't like this, and I'm upset that you participated in this. Well, you know? you know, I mean, for me, I think a lot of it comes from, like, my many, many years spent on 4chan. Mm -hmm. And I'll defend that place till the day I die, because I love it, this little niche community of people yeah. who retell their own jokes endlessly, perfect the art of telling their fucking jokes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, to it, it is fun to have, like, a little area where... Uh, you know, you can make jokes that are incredibly offensive, and right. everyone gets it, and everyone's that's laughing. Th and that's the thing about... Um, I think the problem with 4chan is when yeah. people bring it out of 4chan. Right, like, right. Uh, in, like, Jesse hates 4chan to death. Yes, he, he hates does. everything about it. But it wouldn't be a problem if those people were containing it in 4chan. Sure, yeah. Like, and, and that's the thing, it's like... When people defend 4chan, they always talk about, oh, the internet's the wild, wild west. It's the only place where you can be, like, everybody can be yourself. It's like, yeah, do yeah. that there. That is the wild, wild west. The rest of the internet has sure. been, uh, it's been homesteaded. You know, people are, you can't, like, the internet is real life now. You know, right. like, Facebook, your whole family's on there. Your your job is on there. And the things you have you say have consequences in the real world. Well, like, so, like, you've got to deal with that. We'd have know? to get into the specifics of, like, the particular issues here. Because, like, if, if the issue is, like... People are saying shitty things uh, to you in your YouTube comment section. Like, I, what, what what can you do? Like, people are always going to be jerks. If, if it's like them, like, giving you death threats, like, yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a different... We're well, having that, a different that, conversation what, at that what point. What I mean, really, is that, like... Yeah. It used to be that people saw the internet as a place where you can just be an asshole right. because it's not the real world. Even but, I don't subscribe to that. But like, the not internet everywhere. is the real world now, you right, know? So right. it's like, rather than see the entire internet as, oh, it's a place where you can go to be an asshole. When, when no, I the internet my... is the real world. But 4chan mm -hmm. is a place where you can just go be an asshole, and That's it should right. be that way. When I know? when I am on just 4chan... Just don't take it off 4chan. When I'm on 4chan, I, I am a big shit-posting piece of shit who's deliberately oh, yeah. out there to make people angry. Same. When I when I log into my Gaia online account, you know, I'm I'm a delight. I'm a I'm a I'm a gentleman, a scholar. I'm tipping my fedora all day, you know. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm not closing the pool, it's just about you know knowing who your audience is, what company you're in, and because uh, most yeah. of the internet is rampant autism, they don't know. Better. I was gonna say it's a lack of social awareness <laughs> yeah. uh, for what you're doing to people who bring that kind of super edgy humor out of the proper context. Right. That's that's their problem. They're fucking up and. Yeah. You know, they'll be probably socially punished accordingly. Guys like yeah. Jesse will shit on them and exactly. tell them to die and whatnot. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, but, like, I do want to talk to you about 4chan because sure. you are a long-time 4chaner, and I am too. Yeah. Um, like, I was, I've never been, like, a huge memer. I've never been on B, like, at all. I think I went there uh -huh. once and, and never again. Were you ever a B-tard? I was really never a B-tard at any point. Monkey's yeah. probably a bigger B-tard than I I don't am. even think he is. He no? was, like, a r 9 k guy. Yeah, he was, wasn't he? Yeah. Uh, no, I've spent, like, 90, 90% of my time on Fortune historically was on V. And V is, like, B-lite, in a way. Like, V is the second most popular V is at board. least on topic, though. 
that, for well, the most part. I mean, the the shit posters would disagree. <laughs> the, <laughs> they would complain about the those fucking hot pot hot pocket eating mods uh, not doing their goddamn job, keeping shit on topic. Too many fucking e celebs, man. Uh, yeah. yeah, I've spent mo- V V really is like its own little culture. Well, I mean, that's what I love about 4chan in general. Every yeah. board has its own culture. I've got a friend right. John who's a gigantic TV board goer, and all the time he'll tell me about these jokes that I don't know how anyone lives on TV. Monkey's a TV they've guy. They've got too. their own culture, TV dude. That's is how. awful. It seems okay. Everyone that board says is, that it's like literally, it's <laughs> literally fifty percent Bane posting, right. And fifty percent is this Kino, and that's every <laughs> fucking thread. You're, you're missing. You're missing the um. Oh god, what's that guy's name? Like, there's that pedophile from the Nickelodeon network. Like, there's posting about him all the time. Uh, I don't know who you're. Talking I mean, Bane about. posting's a bit. I, I forget. There's like a. There's a fucking joke. Uh, people, people from TV, correct me in the comments. I forget what it is. Um, Dark Knight Rises came out in like 2011. It's become its own <laughs> universe, dude. It became real, as yeah. as I think Monkey documented in one of his recent videos. Yeah, the uh, the porno parody. Well, the porno, but even more than that, there was there was a there was an incident of a plane crash with no survivors over Le Bain in France. Oh, yeah. With um, <laughs> and at the wreckage site, you could see like uh, guys who look like Dr. Pavel and CIA in the crowd, <laughs> and the flight number was for you. So like, their their efforts made this thing real. It became real. It was a it's a what's the word? It's like a standalone complex. That's <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so you've you've been on V forever. Yeah, and um, oh, and I was gonna say A to yeah, a lesser I've, degree. I've been on A forever, and also Fit. Those are the three boards that I historically went on. Yeah, you you worship at the altar of Ziz. Uh, I actually was. I mean, I like Ziz. I respect him. Uh, he made some mistakes, which got him killed. Unfortunately, what did he die from? Well, he had like a heart issue, and he was he was in a Bangladesh brothel. And he was doing a bunch of like speed of course, or something. Of course, of course. <laughs> what what better fate for a member of Fit? It's a good way to go. To it's a good way to go. To fucking taking speed in a brothel yeah. in Bangladesh. And like his... so every Fit. This is why you worship him. <laughs> of course, <laughs> he lived the dream. And he 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 has, he you know, his heart cracked dream. out. His heart like blew or something. Uh, but actually, you know, much more. Did disease. he die balls deep? I don't know, man. I hope he. I don't know. I don't know if that was in the police reports. I'd like to find out, though. I'd like to go investigate with those. Uh, uh, you know, Monkey wants to travel to Isla Vista to interview the uh, the people to find out what what was really going down with Elliot that fateful day. Yeah. I got to go to Bangladesh and talk to some prostitutes <laughs> for a little bit. Uh, but really, Scooby 1961, or just Scooby, is my real fitness hero who I've been watching for many years. He is he is a god of fitness. He taught me everything I know. Um, like the, the 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 sticky on fit has a link to a bunch of stuff that's relevant, and I read starting strength and all that stuff. But um, Scooby's videos were really what taught me piece by piece. And you know, I've got a long way to go. So like everyone says, I'm really fit, but all I see is like all the inadequacies I still have in terms of that shit. I can lose ten pounds. What, I could what gain body 20. are you trying to get? I would like uh uh. Well, I mean, I know it's, he's a meme, but like like vegan gains has a great body, or or Jack's Blade has like a great body. Jack's I'd like to get Blade that. is like maximum. Jack's Blade is like three percent body fat cut. Yeah, like, I mean he's super cut, which is great. Uh, I don't know if you're trying to be like a cut guy. No, I, I am going for cut guy. I'm okay. I'm purely interested. And then in Then you do have a long way to go. <laughs> I have no interest whatsoever in uh like functional strength. Just don't give a shit. I'm only interested in looking pretty. <laughs> So everybody, if you care about fitness, Scooby1961 on YouTube, he's a god. Let me tell you the quick pitch for this guy. He cares about fitness incredibly dedicatedly. His whole life is devoted to it. That's actually not true. He's an engineer, which he... That's like actually a great thing about the guy. He's so able to devote his time efficiently between being a fucking uh, engineer, which he's retired of now, and just like builds a plane in his garage that he makes videos about, and, uh, and then fitness, which he does just as a pure passion thing. Uh, and it's, he's totally dedicated to doing it all for... Almost free, as little as possible. Like, he's about getting you fit for free. Unlike those fucking six-pack shortcuts, you know, all those pieces of shit faggots. They, uh, they're they trying to take advantage of people and this craze. Scooby is a fucking philanthropist trying to better humanity. And he's a hero for, for doing so. You ever into Hodge Twins? Actually, yeah, but I usually watch their... Uh, I watch a little bit of their fitness stuff. I was always more interested in their... Uh, <sighs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm doing the head shake uh, thing. They do <laughs> balls deep. Oh, them sugar walls. Yeah, I, uh, I I have watched a lot of their stuff. I'm blowing out the fucking mic. <laughs> 
They yeah. not for fitness a little bit, but Sco- Scooby's the best. You can't do better than Scooby. I think the I think maybe part of the reason I've never gotten fit is yeah. that the only fitness channel I follow is Bro Science. <laughs> it's just all irony. They lead you down a dark path. Yeah. <laughs> well, because my I had friends who were big into fitness and fit, so I know yeah. all these guys you're talking about just right. from them. But like the only one I actually followed was Bro Science. Bro Science Life is, is definitely the, the funniest one, but yeah. he'll he'll put you in. Uh, not not T Rex mode, the opposite of T Rex mode, where you only work out your upper body and yeah. uh, don't do legs. Do well, legs. he'll also put you into like heart attack at thirty mode. <laughs> yeah, because that's true. it's <laughs> all about like drinking and uh, <laughs> doing weights and doing random shit. You know, he's sometimes guys who are intense into fitness can can get a little too caught up in the game. You got to learn to enjoy life sometimes, and I'm just yeah. I'm just saying, bro, science life is there to remind us of that sometimes. Yeah. So he serves, even though he's a big meme, he still yeah. serves a purpose, and he is, he's he's a fit boy. He's, he's, and he's funny as hell. Yeah, he's great. Um, yeah. So you spent all that time on fit. You yep. got you learned how to be a fit boy, more or less. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised you're not going for communist body. Well, the thing I oh don't trust me. I've analyzed communist body. Communa is really not that fit. You right. can get way more fit than That's, communist level. Yeah. But, I mean, one of my goals in life is to be able to do a decent communist cosplay. And yeah, I've I got... I think you're close. You just need to lose a little midsection weight. That's probably. true. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just and get a little bit. tan. I'm not doing the tattoos. I don't know. That's something I think about, doing yeah. that. I love Kamen. I want to be him. He's my hero. Yeah, that was like... There you go. Vic, Vic, my brother Victor, like, his whole high yeah. school career was, I gotta get communist body and get the tattoos. And, <laughs> <laughs> and one of those guys, yeah. yeah. You know, I was never... um. Uh, the, the guy who really got me, I started my whole fitness journey, and I, you know, went on and off of it, but it started in, really in elementary school, and then I took a couple of years off just because I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, but like in elementary school, when I saw DBZ, and uh, specifically, everybody, it was Goku. Man. Yeah, everybody, it's everybody who grew up on DBZ, like what the hell? It's, yeah, I, I didn't watch Dragon Ball, I had just seen DBZ, and uh, we had, we were moving around, uh, my, you know, my parents were moving us around a little bit, and we didn't have cable for a long time. And occasionally, I had seen this show, and like when I would go over to a friend's house, I'd see this show called Dragon Ball Z, and I was like, "What? Is, what is this thing? This looks crazy!" Like I remember being blown away by the fact that there were like a story that continued between episodes. Yeah, I was like, "That blows my fucking mind, dude!" Um, and I just one day we finally got cable and was finally able to like sit down and be like, "Oh, so this is what the show is," and it fucking expanded my horizons. I was like, "I want to, I want to train. I want to be strong like this guy." So the first time I started going to the gym was when I, when I was like, like younger than twelve, like ten, and I didn't do it very long at that point. But that was when the seed was planted that would you know bloom to to an extent later on. Do you think Dragon Ball Z has done more for fitness than Naruto has done for ramen? <laughs> Absolutely yes. Absolutely yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have never eaten. Ra- this is personal, but I have never eaten ramen because of Naruto. But I have worked out because of DBZ. So I'm, that, that's that's what I think. Well, I, I have the opposite experience. <laughs> oh, really? I've never worked out a day in my life, but I've eaten tons of ramen. The funny thing about ramen of, was, or about Naruto, I don't was know how much of it was because of Naruto. I didn't even realize that Naruto was like a uh, was like a reference to uh, like a thing in, in ramen. You would have known that if you read Shonen Jump because they explained it all the time. I well, I mean, I I read, I mean, I read the Naruto chapters, but I didn't uh, study you them. Read all the little in between shit. In oh, Jonah okay. Joe. So yeah, yeah. I, I never got the books. I read it all online as soon yeah. as I I got into Naruto kind of late. Uh, like it was after my whole adult swim phase. Right. What I, I meant by read Shonen Jump is like the actual magazine the that was published yeah, in America. Yeah. I um, that would have explained to me. I remember the day that I realized that there was something funny about Naruto's name, yeah. and it was when like years and years later. It was when Jiraiya dies, like, way later in the series, in uh-huh. Shippuden, um, when uh, Naruto, or, when, yeah, when Jiraiya dies, and, like, there's a flashback to, like, how Nar- how Jiraiya came up with Naruto's name, and it shows him, like, eating ramen, and he's got, like, the, the little stars with the swirls on him that's, you know, is what a Naruto the is. Naruto, yeah. And he was, it's like... A fish flake. And see, that's still weird to me, that that thing is a Naruto, because yeah. I don't even have that association in my brain, I just think that it's... This orange ninja man, but it's like, oh my god, he was like named after a fucking ramen thing, and that's yeah. why he loves ramen so yeah, much. Exactly. It's all connected. Yeah, you I go no back idea. to chapter one, and it all. I had no adds fucking up. idea. Yeah, um, yeah, man. So, so DBZ inspired it. Yep. Fit stoked the flames. Yep. Now you're a fit boy, but you Aspiring. have. Aspiring. Yeah. I would say. Would you say that your? I mean, your origins as a fitness guy are obviously more aesthetic and mm-hmm. um, psychological. Yes. But you talk about fitness more in uh, philosophical terms these days, I would say. Sure, sure. Like, it's good, for, like, if you want to maximize happiness in your life, 
Yeah. Being fit is a good way to help. Well, and just the general, like, humans should all be trying to better themselves. Right, sure. Which you you go on about that kind of stuff a lot, but that's not really Mm. the origin of why you're a fit boy. Well, I mean, when I was 10, I wasn't really interested in the future of humanity. You know, I was more selfish at the same time. Exactly. Yeah, that's fair. So I'm curious about, like, uh, I mean, normally with these interviews, I sort of, towards the beginning, go through your whole life. Sure. So... Tell me about where you were born and to whom and why. Sure. What the uh, fuck happened? Yeah, I don't how know how much this... this will be a repeat from the, the Ben interview, because, of course, Ben Saint is my older brother. Ben mostly started from, like, college, so... Okay. If you want to start younger or later, I don't... You know. Well, you know, okay, when I was a kid, my parents moved around a bunch, uh, and I know Ben was kind of carted along with them, but that was when he was very young. By the time I was born, um, we had moved back to... Or maybe, like, just after... What is, the, what is the difference in age between you and Ben? Ben and I are about two years difference. So, okay. yeah, right about two years. Um, uh, we had moved back to Massachusetts. Or I think we lived in, like, Texas for a little bit, moved around maybe a little bit. But soon after I was born, we moved back to Massachusetts, essentially, like, where my parents had started from. Because my dad, um, he's a psychologist, and he was working for this company that had, like, a lot of a chains kind of across the country. And mm-hmm. so, you know, he just got shipped from a bunch of those around. Uh, but that that company closed down, and so he moved back and started his own practice um, in in Massachusetts. So uh, you know, I grew up there in this kind of uh, in this town, Rehoboth, in this little. Um, it's kind of pretty rural. Like there's lots of farms in the town and stuff. Uh, it's it's a pretty big town, uh, but like where we lived, there was like no kids anywhere nearby. So all growing up, it was just me and my siblings. You know, there's me, Ben, who's two years older, and my sister Grace, who's four years younger. And uh, so it was pretty much just us, and I think it was because we were so kind of isolated that when video games got introduced into our lives, and like we, we when I was like five, I was big into Power Rangers. It's a huge TV guy. Um, and then when video games came along, it was like holy shit! Now I've got this whole thing I can actively participate in that's that's going to change my life. Uh, our our uncle um, and my mom had a sister Maggie uh, who died of leukemia when she was young-ish. And, like, her boyfriend, Chuck, I believe was his name. I haven't seen him in a long time. Uh, but Maggie's boyfriend, Chuck, he gave us a original Nintendo console when we were very young. Just because he thought What year would it. this be? This would be about 1994, 1995, okay. maybe. So uh, Super Nintendo's already out, but you've got a regular Nintendo. I mean, you know, it might have been before that. It might have been even before that. I was born in 1990. I mean, Super Nintendo came out in, like... 1989. I mean, th- like this that. this whole part of the story is hazy. Is right. hazy because I don't really remember like when these things happened. I we we got a Super Nintendo sometime later, right. and then later on we would get like a PlayStation. I, whatever. We don't need to go into the specifics of all that. But like, was introduced to video games. Was introduced into like TV shows. Specifically, like Power Rangers made a big, big impact on me as well as Transformers. Same. So right out of the gate, like Japanese, you know, stuff was like appealing right. to me on on that level. Um, Not that either of those is necessarily all Japanese, but... Not all Japanese. Well, you know, they're Japanese in origin, so that it... uh, And Transformers is a Japanese animated shit, right? Am I wrong about that? It has Japanese animators on it. Oh, really? But it's it's an American show. Wasn't it written by... I know, know, like, you know, Hasbro makes Transformers and shit. Right. Okay, well, maybe I'm totally wrong then, but uh, Power Rangers, at least, had its roots in Japan... Yeah. I'm drawing a fucking connection here, did you? Yeah, Help me I get, out here. I Help get me it. out here. I, I okay. also grew up on Power Rangers and Beast Wars, so like... Beast Wars, yes. You know. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. I uh, did that for a while. I guess in school, in school I was... I don't know. I, like, it was funny. When I was like a real young kid, and this is probably common, I was a little bit more outgoing. As I got older into middle school and um, high school, I started to, I don't know, pull back and stuff a little bit. I was more... Uh, I guess I'm kind of like I am now. I was really focused on, like, achieving the stuff I wanted to do and didn't give a fuck about the people around me. What did me. you want to do as a middle and high schooler? I wanted to act. I wanted to do films. And, well, not films, but I wanted to do stage plays and stuff through through mostly high school, but a little bit... Well, in middle school, I started doing chorus and, and elementary school, too. Um, but, uh, like, I was a big chorus guy for my entire childhood. Yeah, this is something that hasn't really come up much in yeah. your content since the Pony Days, but you're a big musicals guy. Yeah, I, I sure when especially when I was a kid, I was really big into musicals, and even now, you know, I've just enjoyed been listening to the music of Hamilton quite a bit. Oh yeah, uh, I'm not, I, I I do like it a lot. It's actually it took a little while to grow on me. The whole rapping thing, just it's not like typical musical fare, so right. it's a little bit different the way you, I, I I adjust to it. But now that I've been kind of immersed in it, I am really enjoying it. Though it's funny, my 
my favorite song on the soundtrack is like what King George sings. It's like the only like white song on the soundtrack. So it's just like some dude singing like a classical musical and he's like the evil racist, uh, you know, like slave driving evil king and he's got the best song yeah, on the album. Of course you'd love that. Of course I do. Of course. That's that's me to a T right there. Yeah, exactly. Uh yeah, so I you know, in in high school is really when I when I started doing bigger stuff. Um did uh did plays and musicals every single year. I uh, did a whole bunch of stuff. So I what was, are some of your favorite uh, mm. musicals from, from back in the day? I mean, I really enjoyed Wicked, you know? Pe- people shit on Wicked. I thought Wicked was... I saw it on Broadway. I went to... to um, me and we took a class trip at one point. I, I think it was with, like, the musical, or the, the, the performance, the theater group. We went to New York and saw Wicked on Broadway, and it was fucking sick. It was dope. Plus, this girl who I liked was there, and she was totally into it. Mm-hmm. Was not into me, but she was there, and I enjoyed having her near me. So that made it a really good time. <laughs> um, yeah, so that I don't know. It was I just had a really good experience with musicals all through high school. I know and you like uh, Jesus Christ Superstar. I yeah. fucking love Jesus Christ Superstar. Uh, Jesus Christ. That that's Jesus the meme song, Christ. but there's there's better ones. But that's it's not a meme. It's a good song. Okay, okay that's a good song. But the it best just comes one is, to your um, mind when you think of the name of the show. The best one's the Overture, the opening song. Exactly that one. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember how it goes. Me though. too. I fuck. Think but it's, it's it. Judas is such a fucking badass in that Jesus musical. Jesus, do you something, something, or something? Uh, yeah. Why did you touch the backward chairs in such a strange land? You'd have managed better if you'd had. To play it. No, no you're doing the meme song. What? That's the meme oh, song. Oh, fuck, you're right. Oh, <laughs> that's a reprise from the opening song, I think, in the meme song. God damn it, I can't fucking remember how it goes. It's the one about G- uh, Judas like being like, Jesus, why are you fucking up? They're yeah. going to get mad Jesus, at you. Jesus, listen, won't you something in my hand? Oh, yeah. Oh, All I have is that, that I want us to, to live. Yeah. And remember, I've been your right-hand man all oh, along. Lord. You have set the world on fire. They think they found the new Messiah. But they'll hurt you when they find they're, they're wrong. wrong. Judas is fucking dope in that musical. Yeah. Like the ones from the, the 70s, part. the new Broadway ones are kind of shitty. I saw it. Uh, what a singer that guy I, is! I saw the I saw mm-hmm. the a newer Jesus Christ Superstar where it had mm-hmm. the original Jesus, but everyone else is younger. That guy's been playing Jesus for like a thousand years. <laughs> yeah, I think he finally <laughs> retired a little while ago, but yeah, he's been into it. Yeah, I saw him with that, which was pretty good, except that Judas was white, and I was not. Yeah, okay that's not with that. good. That's not uh, okay. Judas had to be black. Judas is evil, so he has to be black. Oh, yeah. I apologize for that one. That's beyond the line. <laughs> All right, so hey, joke. Uh, why do black people have uh, light palms? Why do they have white palms? Because there's a little good in everybody. Oh, there you go, folks. Enjoy that one. I've, I've actually heard that one from real racists. <laughs> uh oh, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just playing, fam. I'm just playing. I really have. I really have heard that from real racist people. My, uh, you like, see, that's so the trouble about being such a big uh, 4chan guy. Yeah. I make a lot of racist jokes, and they are 100% ironic. I mean, if you just listen to like the, the, the stuff I'm passionate about philosophically, yeah. it's completely contrary exactly. to all this racist shit. It's just so funny. It yeah. is so funny to <laughs> offend people. So, yeah, there you go. That's a big... it, it's, well, it's, it's funny especially because, like, I'll say all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But I do it with, like, total self-awareness of the idea that this is going to offend someone. Uh-huh. And you always do it in this way that's just, like, like you like you can't even understand that understand someone it. would get offended. Yeah, you know? that's true. That's true. Like, I it almost feels like you're, you're always kind of shocked when people are, like, actually, like, mad about something. I just wish everyone were chill. Yeah. I guess I wish everyone were chill. I wish that. Yeah. I, I but... suppose I'm a little naive when it comes to that. Yeah. 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 Um... Anyway, so you were in high school, yes. big into musicals, yep. theater, trying to become a, a theater boy. Yeah, yeah just I, and I was there for really just the the sheer enjoyment of, of performing on stage. Because I really were, got. Were into you it. ever like a main guy? Like I was how- a main guy the entire time. I was by far the best male singer of the group, and um, was always the lead man every single time. Okay. And, did, you, uh, did any popularity come with that? Yes. As a matter of fact, in high school, I had a fan club, as it happens. Wow. They were a bunch of, well, I, I don't want to shit on them, but they were, they would. I think they would agree, they were kind of a creepy group of like three girls. <laughs> uh, no offense to them. And you didn't manage to fuck any of them. Oh boy. Uh, we don't want to get, in a, we can get into my sexual history, but let's just say <laughs> that I made a few mistakes along the way okay. in terms of being a pussy. Here, I'll, I'll give you one. Here, here, there was one time when uh, my, my friend Jillian in high school came up to me and said, Nate... Look at me. At this time, I, 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 I hit, famously, I had really long hair down to my waist, like all throughout high school. So this was, and I wore um, these sick Kingdom Hearts armbands, one with the nobody <laughs> symbol and one with the heartless symbol. Yeah, dude. 
Four years. I can only laugh because you and Victor had the same exact high school a, life. Yeah, we like, identical. And not well, to he mention, also he also was in theater and got popular because of it. I never like, got really popular, but no, yeah. But this, not, I mean, yeah. he was also like a quiet dude who, who nobody really talked to. Yeah. But yeah. then there was his most famous moment was like he uh, did a pl- they were doing like some shitty drug PSA play uh-huh. or whatever, and like. <laughs> You know, nobody was like really taking it seriously, but like the people in the audience weren't sh- like we're just talking over it the whole time. That's fucking and shit. And Victor just like snapped and gets up and like lectures the audience on how they <laughs> like like what a you know. Ass. I know like he's like, look, none of us care about this either, but you can at least have respect <laughs> and like you know like listen to the thing. And he became like like famous after that. That's like, great. It was like an incident or something. Hey man, those those those. Uh... What is the word I'm looking for? Uh, take in charge moments, you know. Yeah. That's what makes you a man. But he also had long hair and wore like a black trench coat and shit. So like, I, I mean, like he looked like he could be in Section 13 or whatever Organization 13. Yeah, my, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I've talked about this before, but famously, there was a pivotal moment in my life that made me like this weirdo introverted guy. I also was in like marching band through all college, uh, through all high school and stuff. Um, but. I was I was deeply antisocial, and it was all because of this fucking movie. One of my favorites of all time, Vampire Hunter D. Bloodlust, dude. <laughs> yeah, Vampire fucking Hunter this. D. Bloodlust <laughs> changed my life in the worst way. In the wor- it made me think like, oh my god, D. is such a fucking badass. All yeah. I need to do is be like, because like all the bitches and all like the men in that shit are like, he's so he's so yeah. stoic. He's such a well, fucking well, badass. The, the he never says anything. The point of it is anything. that he's a half vampire, so like he has a magnetism that yeah. like literally mind controls see, people to see, fall in love. I didn't with get him. that. I didn't get. I didn't yeah. realize that just being quiet in the corner all the time and like <laughs> thinking you were such a badass would like not, You're not do anything by alone. Yoshitaka Amato. I know that that was my problem right there. <laughs> so I spent my high school days. It had some weird effects on me. Um, but yeah, I was just like I decided to stop talking in class. Because I wanted to be, though you know, to some to be fair, some of this might just be an internal rationalization for legitimate shyness that right. I don't want to cop to. It's possible that that's true too. I, I can't, I really don't know. Um, but that movie sure felt like a turning point in my life after I watched that. It was, it was too good. It was too fucking good, dude. <laughs> they brought to the uh, is, is a crime. It's a crime. <laughs> it owes me my sex life in high school back. I want yeah. that back. <laughs> so you spent all that time trying to be cool and mysterious, and it backfired. Yeah, did I mention that, you know, in addition to the Kingdom Hearts um, wristbands, I wore weighted leg bands with, like, weights to make me strong at all times? Did you learn that from DBZ? Yeah, I sure did. I, I did was copying too. Goku. I, I did a lot of that. Did like, you too? Yeah. A lot of times yeah. I thought, like, oh, like, instead of, like, you know, like, working out, I'll yeah. just have, like, some kind of innate training going on by like wearing something extent, heavy a little know? bit i mean these were like five pounders and then uh the thing was they were full of sand and like as i walked because i wore them all the time they would get worn out and the sand would start to leak and like people would be like where's this sand coming from and i just i don't fucking know dude i have no idea where the sand's coming from <laughs> you're gonna have to ask somebody else about that that's fucking great it was pretty good <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, so mm-hmm. anything else you want to share about your early life or you want to move into college? Yeah, and, uh, get, anything get else of interest. Oh, I didn't finish that story about that girl that one time. Yeah. It was just that, um, so my friend Jillian came up to me and said, Nate. I'm going to take a piss, but you can just keep talking. Okay, I'll probably do that at some point too. Um, <laughs> there was a time when, uh, you see, right, so my friend Jillian walks up to me and says, Nate, look over there at that girl standing in that doorway. And I did. And there was a, you know, an, uh, an attractive, blonde, curly-haired girl standing there. And she said, Nate... That is Jess, and she likes you. She wants to date you. She said these, like, this was the time when God was giving me my chance. <laughs> and uh, and I, I looked over her. I, I made eye contact. You know, actually, in my, in, no, I did not make eye contact. I was too much of a pussy. I looked at her. I looked her up and down, and I said, okay. And then I turned back and started reading my fucking Animorphs or whatever again. That's, that's how I handled that situation. Which is have, just indicative of my social skills in general. I at have the time. a lot of stories like that from yeah. all of my school life. I just really remember this one because it was so clear. Like, Nate, yeah. he, right, there's your chance. We're giving it to you. And yeah. I just, you know, uh, I'm just, I'm such a different guy than I was back then. Yeah. Different, different times, man. 
Thank God. Thank God we're yeah. all different. <laughs> yep. Thank God none of us are like our high school I self. would not have been a fun person to hang out with in high school. Ne- me neither. You know, to this day, I'm still kind of weirdly moody sometimes. Like, my reaction to being mad at people will be to walk outside and just stand there and wait yeah. for hours until they come out and say, Nate, what's wrong? I, I, I mean, not so much anymore, but like, I've seen yeah, you at in, times. I've seen you in, like, just kind of this low simmer mode of, like, just annoyance. Remember the like, time? Like, there's, an, like there's, yeah. just a, there's just a thread of annoyance boiling under the surface, and yeah. you just can't quite talk to anybody. That happens. I've seen that. That happens. Um, remember at Radcon 2 when I started cleaning obsessively? Yeah. That that was one of those. Yeah. I was, I, that was how I chose to express my frustration. I don't even remember what it was about, but some right. frustration. I just started walking around. I was like, I started cleaning. I didn't talk to anyone. I just started cleaning up, and everyone was like, what's happening? What's going on here? Yeah. And they were like, Nate, do you want some help? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Uh, if you feel like helping, uh, yeah, you know, I've got it. But if you want to help, sure. And, uh, and then other people joined in. Yeah, I don't know. That's just how I handle being felt mad. guilty. Yeah, that like they hadn't cleaned up and you were doing it. I guess, I guess it's kind of a passive aggressive thing I do to avoid confrontation, which I wish I could change about myself. But hey, I've been I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Yeah. Um. Oh, so that's high school, I guess. So that's yeah. pretty much high so school. So what? Where? What did you study in college? What did I study in college? Um. Oh, uh, right. When I started college, my plan was to become a doctor because I really liked blackjack. Blackjack was right. like, again, my major life choices <laughs> controlled entirely by anime since birth. Um, I was like, Blackjack is so cool. I want to be a doctor. At least you had patrician taste. That's like, true. Like, That's if there's true. two characters, like... You weren't just D trying... D and Blackjack. Yeah. Like, like, I mean, you, you had DBZ as a kid, and that's fine. Everybody gets DBZ. Everyone needs an entry point. But yeah. at least you weren't trying to be, like, Sasuke or something. True, man. You had, like, fucking D and Blackjack, who are both badass. It's not bad, yeah. You know? Yeah, they are. they are. Both classic 90s OVA. The, why that did, 90s OVA from Blackjack... Why had you seen so many 90s OVAs as a teenager? Sh- shit, man. I, I, you like, know, where, we, who got you into I these? I saw them all on On Demand. They weren't available on any channel, but they were on On Demand for some reason. And why were you allowed to buy On Demand movies? They were free. If they weren't oh. free, I never would have seen that shit. Me and my siblings spent a ton of time when we were young watching shit On Demand on our fucking TV cable plan. And thank God. I mean, I never would have gotten into anime yeah. if it wasn't for that. In, in, like, the big way that I have now. Because those, I mean, those shit. were, like, stuff that you could maybe find at Blockbuster, yeah. but it'd be hard. I never know? paid for shit. Yeah. Uh, to this day, I don't buy any anime. I don't do any of that. I don't support the industry at all. Yeah, why are you so into that philosophy of not it, it, supporting it's not a philo- art? Okay, I'll tell you why. I'll explain this right now. So I don't buy any anime ever, and it's not like I'm opposed to it, but I just wouldn't even think about buying any of them. And it's entirely because it is so easy for me to get them through, like, you know, torrents and stuff. I've just developed such a rhythm of doing it that way that it is way harder for me to do something like even search Crunchyroll for a show I want to watch, even if it's free. It is easier to me to get it downloaded and just have the file on I my mean, computer. I mean, Crunchyroll aside, yeah. I, I mean, the only reason I use Crunchyroll is that I find it easier than torrenting. Sure. Because when I want to watch something, it's always spur of the moment, and mm-hmm. I just want to put it on and it be there. I don't want it to wait right. for a download. But like That is a hassle. That is a but hassle. like, the only reason I would ever pay for anime now is just to put money into the industry, you know? And, right. like, anime aside, because, honestly, I don't think your money goes anywhere. Like, yeah, I don't blame yeah. you for not paying for anime. But, like, well, if it's, like, a, mm-hmm. an album or something, yeah. or, like, Patreon, you've never given to a Patreon I have never patroned anyone, ever, at any point. And is it just a philosophy of, like, like, if you had lots of money, would you start doing it? Oh, if I was, like, super rich and had no monetary concerns, I'd be happy to give away my money. I would right. totally give it to the people who I think are doing, like, good work and deserve, yeah. and, like, like I want to see let, more of this shit. Let's say mm-hmm. in a year and a half, Yeah, this is my prediction. Yeah. This is my very optimistic, happy prediction for you. Things are going pretty good right now. Let's say in a year and a half, your student loans are completely paid off, you're living entirely off That's of Patreon. Reasonable. That's going to happen. Mm-hmm. You're living entirely off of Patreon. Let's say you're making... Uh, Let's say you're making, let's be fucking generous. Sure. Say you're making four grand a month. Okay. Uh, are you patroning Absolutely people? not. No one. Not a chance. And I'll tell you why. Uh, it's because that is not a level where I'm like 100% set. If I, I, I would need to be a millionaire probably before I'm like comfortable giving away any money. <laughs> and it's, be, it's, it, it's all, it all comes back to the fact that if I can get away with not paying for something, I will do it. I will do it. I am entirely motivated by a desire to have as much resources at my disposal as I possibly can. And, like, my survival and my well-being comes first before, right. you know, because I'm, I'm a big guy who's into, um, 
like you know, like we were saying, self improvement and self reliance and you know, not not like fucking over people to advance yourself. That I'm completely against, but you know, uh, just just bettering yourself is the way you can better the world. Is my philosophy. Yeah. So I really think it is. I mean, I, I probably take this to an excessive degree with my like never patroning anyone, just have no right. interest in that. Um, if the money went 100% to that person, I'll tell you, I would be 10 times more likely to do it than just the fact PayPal. that any of it gets sna- uh, snagged up by Patreon. I don't give a fuck about the Patreon people. They're right. fucking suits. I don't give a shit. What? No, even though they put out that millennial face. About, uh, 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 what? Yeah. So do you ever feel like guilty about the fact that you profit off of the existence of anime but don't put anything into it or anything like that? Um, hmm, No. I don't uh, feel guilty about it at all, but I would I would like to contribute. I would right. like to. Or know? like 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 any of the YouTubers who like were a huge influence. Like if Mr. Beatong opened a Patreon, would you consider or just like if, if he just had a PayPal donate link, would you just like throw him $15? You know? I'll, I'll tell you this, I would never do it just like I'm feeling like donating to Mr. Beatong today. If Mr. Beatong was like, "Guys, I'm going to be a full-time YouTuber. I need to make $100,000, you know, whatever. I need to raise that much for right. this project I'm thinking of." That would tempt me much more. That if there was Have like you ever a, given to a Kickstarter or anything? Never. 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 I'm super frugal. I don't give yeah. money to anyone. Fuck everybody else. I mean, I just to, <laughs> just to describe to the audience, like I think you make the at least the second most amount of money in the PCP. At this point, total. yeah. At like this point. I don't know. Though that was like within like that changed from like yesterday to today. So that's no, a very I don't, I don't just mean thing. on Patreon. I mean like all together. Oh, like, oh amount yeah. Amount of yeah. money you make. I have a real job. That's like yeah. I could live on my normal job for the rest of my life happily. Right. If I, wanted to. I mean, I don't. I don't know how much you want to say any specific numbers to try to figure out if you make more than me or not. Let, I don't. I don't feel the need to do that. I don't feel yeah. the need to do that. Well, let's leave it ambiguous as to which of us is doing better. That'll be more fun yeah. to speculate. Well, the <laughs> the point is that. Y- I, I'm in your house right now, yeah. and it is very clear to me that you are living well below your means. Oh yeah, like that's you true. could easily afford a much better place. Yep. Um, I'm just gonna describe it to the. This is the interview, but I'm gonna describe the stuff that you walled. Um, okay. <laughs> Nate's entire apartment is three rooms and a bathroom and, and a bathroom, bathroom. Uh, that are all in a row. So it's like yeah. you start off in, in like a little living room area. No doors either. <laughs> no yeah, there's doors. No, no doors in the house. <laughs> so it's a little living room. It goes right into the bedroom yep. with a bathroom in the middle, and then right into the kitchen. All the same size. Um, all about let's say oh. What, what? How long? Would I'm terrible. I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe like forty to fifty feet long. Is that accurate? Is that good? what? You mean the whole house, right? Are oh, you talking about length, right? Yeah, I was talking about one room. I'm trying to think of what oh, one you're room talking about square sizes. footage. Yeah. I got no fucking idea, dude. I did not it, know. Each room's probably like, it's, like it's a small-ish room, eight I guess. by twelve feet or kinda something. High ceilings, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, the point being, it's in like this kind of rinky-dink apartment. It's a shitty complex. neighborhood in a shitty apartment complex. For yeah. Sure, for sure. Um. Definitely, like the like, it's weird that parts of it don't seem so bad, and then other parts do. Well, it's like out on that back the porch, street. it looks like shit, but yeah. then out front, it looks fine. Um, yeah, yeah. But anyways, like yeah, it's kind of a shitty neighborhood, shitty apartment. Yeah. Um, you can hear other people. I'm sure other Fucking. people can hear us. Yeah. Uh, you've got. There's not a lot of like furniture or anything. Like it's it's Dude, very bare bones. Your like the your trip here has motivated me to actually get some furniture. Yeah. So consider like half of what I got now just not here before you got here. Yeah. More or less. Like what, my wait. chair, my chair, the chair you're sitting on right now is a car seat from my car. Yeah. So that's yeah, the Nate kind of brought shit in doing. a couple of car seats. Yep. So that was for me. Like you brought those in knowing I was coming. Yep. That's right. So so I'm sitting in a car seat. Um, it's comfy though, right? That's a good car and seat. And where did that other like you bought a new bed and I I'm did. sitting on your old one? I, I well, you know, in fairness, I had been meaning to get a better bed just because right. like mine was. It's like a it's a twin. It's like the small. I could kind. not imagine that being my like. But you know, like a week before, like a week like, ago, like that makes sense to me as a guest bed. But yeah. the thought that you were sleeping on that full time and you could easily afford a real bed a week ago that was my permanent bed for the last like yeah. two, one and a half years. I couldn't. That's my bed. I yep. sleep on like a thousand dollar. Uh, not me, dude. You know, twin size. This thing, this mat- mattress, my my twin, good bed uh, here, full size mattress. My good mattress is like was like two hundred and forty bucks, and I was like, oh, shit, fuck, I don't can't pay this much for a fucking mattress. Do you not have any back issues or anything? I'm fine. I don't know. Maybe it's because okay. you work out. Maybe it makes it easier. I was Maybe. thinking about that earlier. Like I was sitting on your bed and I was like, "Is that may- sh- is that bed shitty? Is that bad? It's not bad. It's just that yeah, like okay. I get bad back. Like I had like a really bad." 
uh, back pains because I yeah. was on like just an average mattress and in an average chair when I literally yeah. sit or lay all day to do my job. So right, right. I bought like the nicest bed and the nicest chair and no more back problems. But I, I suspect if you're healthy and you work out, you don't have as many of those anyway. <laughs> it probably helps. It probably yeah. helps. I mean, that's the thing. Like, like it your house is super spartan but like it makes sense for you're comfortable here like you don't care you're not, not even, even concerned about it yeah, like, this was the like yeah as soon as i found this place this met my my requirements it's got internet that actually wasn't as good as i was hoping for but is still everything i need yeah. um which it, that was like 90 percent of my concern with getting the place right, was internet it's in an area that is dude you should have seen some of the places i was scoping out they were like shit like garbage like yeah. i crack dealers Seemed like they would be infesting the woodwork. I didn't see any, but they would have been there if I had been there at night. Um, so this this is like a decent neighborhood uh, compared to the places I was looking at. But all I was concerned about was just like as low rent as possible. You know, has the the bare minimum. It's got this place is nice by comparison. I'm happy with it. I don't know. It's it's, it's, it's just in winter. It's just that it's below what would be my standard of living. I, yeah, I see your point. <laughs> that, yeah, that's my thing. So that's the kind of guy. Even I am, though we super make about frugal. the same amount of money, it's because because all my money, all I give a shit about doing is is getting on that grind, making them videos, and paying off my student loans. Right. That's what I'm. That's what I'm all about. So if you if you let's say you pay off your student loans tomorrow, sure. somehow uh, they they magically go away. Mm-hmm. You leave your job, like. Uh, because you live so frugal, do yeah. you really need that much money on Patreon? Like, because Ben is similar to you in that Ben lives extremely frugally, but Ben... In a different way, but yeah. Ben, like, because of that, like, Ben only needs to make, like, $400 a month, and, like, he that's He'll he's survive. okay with that because he's... Yeah. You know, but you're you're kind of similar, except that you want to have all this overhead well, see, money. I like, got ambitions for expanding operations all over the place. Right. I want a studio space because yeah. I do shit in my room here, which is perfectly fine. It, it's good, but I want like a studio where I can have all my shit ready to fucking go and make things right. whenever I want. And that would probably be in you know in a separate location from my house. Um, yeah, man, and like. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, like, I'm not as... Well, I, actually, I made a big post on my Patreon today, and you are a patron, so... Yeah, I, I read it. Yeah, so you know that, like, I'm not going to drop everything as soon as I make, like, the amount that I'm asking for. That is the goal for, like, survivability. And that's... I, I might, I'll probably change to monthly soon, so that's going to change as well. Um, but, like, I'm looking for, like, a middle-class lifestyle. Like, that that is really what I'm shooting for. Right. And right now, with my current job, I basically make that. So I'm, I'm hoping to, like, emulate that. Because even though I personally am willing to live super spartanly, the bitches don't come for free. You got to have the green to make the scene. And that's right. not a joke. I want to have a place that will impress women because that is uh, what you have to do. You got to yeah. do it. If you want to play the game, that's, that's what you need. So, um, yeah. There, there you go. I, I need to make a certain amount of money to have the certain kind of lifestyle that I'm looking for. And, like, I want to be able to go out and do things, you know. I, I don't want to live like I did during Mia Mafava all the time. Just, yeah. like, only focused on churning out content every single day. It'd be nice to have some time off. That's the world I'm trying to escape right now. Yeah. Like, I'm at your house because I'm trying to find a way out of this... Literally, all I do is make videos. And I salute you for it. It's exactly yeah. the right thing to do. Yeah. Um, so, but let's say tomorrow your Patreon makes exactly what you make at work. Do you sure. leave your job? The only reason the answer is no is because Patreon is inherently volatile, and I'm afraid right. that that would change. There's no job security with Patreon. Let's say I Patreon, would build up some savings first. Let's say Patreon tomorrow is making 150 percent of what you make at work. Do you leave your job? I mean, that's great, but what I would, I would definitely build up some savings first. I would, okay. I mean, plus I got to pay off my student loans. I'm okay. not doing anything till I pay those off uh, in terms of, you know, quitting my job and shit. Um, so I'm, I'm doing that. Then I'm uh, building up, like, I don't know the number, but I'm going to save up some money because like, you know, as you can tell, I'm an extremely careful, planner, frugal guy. Yeah. I want security. That is the defining characteristic of best guy ever in my, in my head is it's the true. extreme planning. I really think that the... Uh, People say this, but I really think it's true. I am, if you've seen my Gurren Lagann video, I am a Rossiu who desperately, desperately wants to be a Kamina. <laughs> That's just, and I'm just not that guy yet. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. I'm going to take this opportunity to take a piss. Oh, oh well, that was fast. Well, whatever. <laughs> uh, we'll let-
edit this out. Totally. Talk about how cool my new glasses are. Uh, Nate got some cool new glasses. Yeah. I'm not actually in front of the microphone yet, but... <laughs> Crank your volume, audience. Yeah. Uh, hey, is still... <laughs> Oh, good thing you don't pay for this content anyways. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Everything on the PCP is free, except the main episodes anyway. They're not paying for shit. I wonder if you, they can hear you pissing. Because you've left the door open. I always, I'm just so used to peeing, you know, alone and being naked in my apartment and shit. It's weird having a guest. But yeah. No, in a good way, in a good way. Doesn't matter. I'm gay, so I will look at your PP. <laughs> quality content. This is high quality, high quality content. Me and Math of a Never Ends. Me and Math of a Never Ends. What are you doing? 50, oh, it's only been 51 minutes? Holy shit, I <laughs> yeah. feel like I've gotten to my old... Hey, we haven't even gotten to college yet. Yeah, and that's when dude, shit gets these, crazy. These, these interviews are always like... <laughs> you you never realize how long three hours is until you live it. Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, what I was about to say, yeah, yeah. Like, no one can really appreciate the level of planning you do unless they work with you. Dude, the, th that's entirely true. And the thing is, like... Have you seen my new the the final Mia of it yet? Yeah. Okay, so you saw the ending. Yeah, I watched it today. So in the ending, I announced like the, the ghost, ghost in the, in the shell thing, thing, which is hype as fuck, and it's great, and like it's this goddamn pixel animation, and yeah. I have told exactly zero people that I commissioned that like a year ago. Yeah. Uh, well, I knew. I did I've you know? It. Have I shown I, it to you? Yeah, I've seen the pixel animation when you first got it made. Okay, I probably did for for hype purposes, just, just to, like you show just off showed you guys. me and Ben. Yeah, yeah that that sounds right. Um. But, uh, I mean, I've shown, like, no, like, I've got several of those things right yeah. now that are, like, various the, projects the, in the, the works. The video parts of this video were filmed two and a half fucking That's years not true. ago. It was, it's, it's getting close to well, the one slightly piece one over was, two years right? ago. What? The One Piece one was, right? The One Piece one was filmed approximately 1.8 years ago, and the Ghost in the Shell one was filmed two point one years ago i think that's about right okay so over two years ago yeah, yeah. you filmed footage for this thing yep <laughs> and over a year ago you commissioned all this pixel art animations for this thing that's right and it's still in the woodwork uh, and it's not like i've been fucking around no. at all it's that i have a i had to finish my goddamn degree and my fucking full-time job. I forgot you were working on that degree until, like, a couple months ago. Yeah, when I, I finished it in, in January. It was when it was finally done for, for final yeah. good and all. Holy shit, I forgot you were still in school yeah, while so we're, doing just, work. Yeah, so just for context, people, remember. So me and Mafiva would not have been possible before the time it happened. Absolutely not. Like it, I, I could have done it a couple months ago, I guess, but not by much. Yeah. Yep. Um, so yep, yep, yep. To, to just give it, like perspective like the way i do content is i have an idea yeah. and then i write a script there's no yeah. note taking there's no planning except for when i do like if i go into a show intending to write about it i might take a bunch of notes mm -hmm. um but it's at best like a whiteboard full you know um yeah you will come into like a podcast with pages I mean, if you guys have watched the, the manga, yeah. if you if you've watched the live action Aero manga podcast, you'll see that Nate had four pages of printed notes. Granted, lots of space. Okay. Yeah, that's right. that's right. That could have probably fit on a page and a half, but like, <laughs> uh, yeah, he comes in with shitloads of notes. Um, yep. You know, always doing like double checking prep. I think you you always read the One Piece chapters more than once for podcast. That's right. right. That's and right. And sometimes you'll even go back and read older chapters just to be completely sure. <laughs> That you remember what you're talking That's about. That's 100% accurate. Um, yep. The fucking Kingdom Hearts lecture. Yeah. You yeah. spent like three hours just drawing that whiteboard. It had, and it didn't it turn out great. It looked great. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, you. I had to make sure you, I was you correct. You probably spent half an hour just recreating the fucking logo at the top. I that that's true. That did take a while. <laughs> I wanted that to be good. <laughs> and like had like extensive no, like it's just. Yep. It's it's just funny to see the way you work because like 
you know, yeah, I can watch you do all that. Mm-hmm. And then you'll have, like, me and Jesse who will literally sit down in front of a camera and just stream of consciousness a bunch of bullshit. And, well, like... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you think it's... do you, How much of the note-taking do you think is, like, that you have to do it? And how much of it is just confidence boosting? It depends on what the topic is. Like, every PCP... You know, I, I'm, like the biggest talker on the PCP and I don't do any preparation for that stuff. I, you know, that's, that's like, that's like my fun. That's what I do for fun. Right. Um, so I, I'm able to do that sort of stuff when I want to, but like, I don't go into my main projects. I I, I guess that projects into like the Aeromanga stuff. Like I have a philosophy where I really hold myself to a high standard of like accuracy. Cause I think about like what, what I ask for other people when they're talking about a show is, I don't want people to be fucking... If you're talking about Aeromanga and you're criticizing Aeromanga, I expect you to know your shit. I expect you to be accurate. And to a certain extent, I think guys like you and Jesse are just, like, better at understanding things quickly and easily. Whereas I think I need... I I always think of, um, in Bakuman, I always think of, um, I'm more like, um, uh, Ashirogi Muto, the guys who... Yeah. Think they describe it like they are not the uh, the our tours. They are the hard worker. Think about things. Yeah, go over it a I, thousand times. I mean, if we're gonna bring up the Bakuman thing, please. Like I, I read through it in 2014 and was constantly comparing everybody to the PCP. Yeah, yeah. And you and Ben were Muto Ashirogi, especially because right. you were actually working together at the time. That's but right. Like that's right. both of you definitely have the philosophy of like. Uh, you know, coming to meet the audience mm-hmm. and, like, just working extra, extra hard. And, like, it's not about... Like, like to you, it's about making videos. It's not, not necessarily about what the videos are, it, per I'm, se. I'm interested in telling a story. And, like, in, yeah. my, in my case, like, the anime is my medium to tell my story. Exactly. Or to, like, make a point via and, the show. But it, yeah. it's, like, you, you're not doing it in, like, this idea of, like, I have a grand vision from the beginning. I mean, you... You, you, sometimes, sometimes. I would say that the way you create videos is mm-hmm. like, um, I don't want to say based on a template, but it's like mm-hmm. you look at what is, like what even is a YouTube video, and yeah. then you like make that kind of, you know? I suppose like, so. Like, 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 like the Guru and the Gone one is heavily influenced by that Mr. Beatung video that you Very had so much, much so. respect for, right. you know? Right. And like Mia Mathava is like this idea of let's try to make this more easily made and consumable content that could come out every day. Right. You know, it's it's more about this, like, experimentation than it is about creating the specific video, which is, like, the opposite mm. of Jesse, where Jesse is, like, doesn't care what YouTube is. He just wants to make his thing, like, whatever, he, how, exactly how he came up with it, you know, which is okay. kind of why he doesn't have the YouTube success. Well, you know, you know I would argue that um, I have become more in tune with that as I've gone on, uh, that I... I feel a lot like Jesse a lot of the time when I'm making content. But, yeah. you know, I mean, my recent success, starting with Galco, you know, right. that was me playing the game of YouTube more. I mean, the video itself was... Uh, when I'm making an idea for video, I'm really, at that point, not thinking about what YouTube wants out of it. I am... I, I, you know, when I was writing that script, for example, I was only thinking, like... I watched Galco, wow, was really good, had these thoughts about it, wrote right. them down, and then I'm sure there was some, you know, decision making as to like what to include, you know, based on it's gonna be a fucking video, so I gotta put the shit in it that makes sense. But it's it's after the video is really the writing and editing are done to amuse me, you know. And I mean yeah. that video had an editor. Uh Snooping Turtle? Oh god, I hope I got that right. Uh and he did great work. He was wonderful to work with. Um but I was approving, like, every step of the way. He would show me, like, a minute. He was like, how was this? Or, you know, is this good? And I would be like, okay, tweak these things. So, you know, I was involved in the whole process there. And it, it really, like, I, the whole point of that video was kind of to get to that end shot and to, like, make that little speech at the end. Like, I make entertaining videos as an excuse to lecture people about things I think. Yeah. Like, that's really what it comes down to. And I'm going to find a way to do it no matter what. <laughs> that's what I'm interested in in YouTube. Like, yeah. YouTube is my way to feel like I'm making a difference in the world uh, in a way that I enjoy, which is great. Um, but, but but just to get back to the, to the original point here, uh, I, I felt like for a long time I wasn't making content that was really working with YouTube very well. Like, the, like Gurren Lagann Part 2, I was definitely, like, I was doing something very similar to what Mr. B-Tongue had done, but I, I don't feel like I was copying him. I just felt like my ideas were all inspired by it. And, but I mean, like, at the time... Yeah. 
there was definitely, and we all in the PCP had this, yeah. and and still do to some extent, though it's it's waning away as time mm-hmm. goes on. We had this intense respect for like what we saw as the ultimate type of video, which was the forty five minute in depth, highly edited yeah. uh, analysis that covers everything. Like right, that was right. kind of what we we worshipped. You had um, a Canterlot wedding by Anthony C was like your one of favorite. my favorites still. Yeah, and yeah. and the Mr. B Tongue video that climax is um, fucking unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, the the classic Mr. Plinkett videos yep. Yep. um that the, the the star wars reviews that we all sort of look up to ego raptor sequelitis yeah uh, which was my big one you know in the beginning so like all of us had kind of gotten into analysis videos by way of these gigantic epic 45 minute highly edited videos and we all did ours you know mm-hmm. i did the sword Art online videos YMS, another good example. Right, um, yeah, yeah. You know, I did the sword online videos and the asterisk war jesse uh, did uh, movie bob another hero of ours yeah I'm joking. I, I don't. <laughs> I mean, really, that good is kind of this kind of video. But, See, the thing, I, yeah. I actually have no idea what his content like. Yeah. I just hear people shit on him, so that's that's what yeah. the joke's based on. Uh, I, I actually did take a lot of influence from Movie Bob. Hey, but, okay, but, there yeah. you go. Uh, but, In your physique, not, not I'm anymore. assuming you mean. <laughs> hey, 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 I'm fat and dangerous. <laughs> that man is gross. Uh, <laughs> He's pretty fat and dangerous himself. He's disgusting. Um, Especially to those fucking men's rights pieces of <laughs> shit. Watch out for Bob Chipman. Yeah. He'll fuck you up. <laughs> anyway, you did the Girl in the Gone video. Yeah. Jesse had like the the horseshoe reviews and the horseshoe finale, and like that was kind of like at the time just the atmosphere of what we thought like a YouTube video is supposed to be. And right, like right. because we liked it so much, we thought surely this is what everybody wants. Matthew Matosis was yep. out by this point, right? right. <laughs> um, and then like. There was just kind of a moment where it became apparent that no one wants that anymore. Well, like, nobody you know, cares. It's funny you know? that you're saying it this way. Like these things, I think, were apparent to you, and the rest of us, I think, you've always been ahead of the curve when it comes. I mean, because this is like what you do. You're yeah. you're a YouTube guy on you know and in literal serious genius. ways, <laughs> right? Of course, and uh, to some extent, and uh, like you know, like the Galco video was was titled. And thumbnailed the way it was because basically of your suggestions, you yeah. know, and it worked incredibly well. Yeah. If I had just called that best anime ever, Oshia de Galco Chan, no. would not have worked, would not have happened. And Mia Mafava was, th- that was me saying, like, what I'm doing is just really not working the way that I wanted it to. Yeah. Like, I wanted, like, if I had kept doing what I was doing, you know, to that degree, and maybe I'll fuck up and keep going and go back to that, but, uh, me and Method just fucking ended. I, I, I gotta emphasize this to the audience. Like, yeah. the the PCP, like, the concept of us as a group is that we're YouTubers. Yeah. Like, we are friends who are YouTubers, and a lot of what we talk about is how we're doing our jobs. Right. Like, I, I don't know what, like, it's hard for me to imagine what other people think we we do in the PCP. Like, is it just a, I don't know, a group? Oh, what's the word? Burst of link! <laughs> yeah, that, that we're all just burst linking yeah. all day. And I mean, yeah, we have lots of just casual conversations and shit around. But yeah. like, I would say, especially for, for a long time, the bulk of what we talked about was YouTube. Like, what we're doing, yeah. how we're doing it. Um, what we should be doing, just sharing ideas and advice and stuff like that. Complaining because, when it's going bad and yeah, bitching know. about commenters. It's yeah, like yeah. probably eighty percent of <laughs> all the <laughs> interactions we've had. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> like we, you know, but the point, like the reason we're all friends is that we're doing the same job, and it's a weird job that not a lot of people have, yeah. you know, and uh, and so there's not so many people you can relate to about it, and like yeah, sort of when. When we all stopped doing Pony and we moved out into our own channels, we all mm-hmm. kind of were doing our own thing in a way. And it, it was very much like, let's share notes. Like, how is it working for you? It's not really working for me. Mm-hmm. Why is it working for you? Well, I'm doing this. Oh, well, you know, I don't know if I want to do that. You know, and like a lot, I would say the last year or so has been a lot of me growing more and more successful and going, yeah. guys. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. And everybody else going, I don't know, man. I could probably make it without doing that. that and then a year later going, okay, I didn't make it doing that. So <laughs> you're, you're really describing me. You're really describing not me. Not just you. Like, Jesse and Hippo are very – like, Jesse started up Jesse not a review essentially for that reason. still not 
committed to I think a but it's it's Jesse no knows offense, Jesse I love Jesse you, knows what to do though it's just that I think he, Jesse just he feels like an anger that he has to change to adapt yeah. to YouTube whereas I am and not and also that. it's just that his life is so all over the place that he Jesse yeah. will just blink off the map for a month you know and like you can't yeah. do that, it, that he's, like, it's tough to schedule things when right you're like he'll he'll come in <laughs> and do like a whole month of perfectly tailored YouTube content and I mean, to, to, but to then Jesse, he'll stop for a month he would you say know? that like a lot of that recently was due to his basement flooding oh, yeah. and fucking up his I life. Mean, so that's no, what I'm saying. His life situation is always the main reason. Like, yeah. Jesse, he, the man goes through hard times, you know? Sure. But, like, it's, it's, hard it's because he, he never just fully commits to, I'm going to be a YouTuber now. He'll do it for a little while. I mean, he still goes on about, like, I can't and, wait to escape this fucking hellhole yeah. of YouTube. Well, he yeah. hates YouTube, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, like... But like, but like, he appre- he's he's he also. If you look at the way his thumbnails and titles have changed over time, you can tell he's trying to do the thing. The not a review know? is, I like my Japanese animes. Some of those he works. I mean, you know, for YouTube, he works too hard on them. Uh, right. But like, as putting that aside, the length is great. Those are really right. good videos, and like he, even he acknowledged like that was his most successful he, he's, channel. He's always said that my Japanese animes is the one he wants to protect from his bullshit. Right. Like, he tries his hardest to make sure nothing that gets posted there is completely retarded. <laughs> so far, so good. I think. Yeah. 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 Um, but, but it's definitely been like a thing amongst the PCP that like I've been kind of being like, guys, we have to change. And the yeah. only person who like immediately did it is Jeff. Who then yeah. blasted past everybody? It's like, true. like uh, if you look at the early Jeff videos, like whatever you see as a difference in the titles and thumbnails, I taught him that. He just took it farther than I was willing to. You know, Can like I gotta, gotta respect that to some degree. He's he's even be- he's even worse than that is Lachlan Still, who who yeah. is a monster. I don't know if you watched the Pedantic Romantic at all. Oh right, I forget that that's the same guy. He's blowing up. You know? he's, he blew up because he's using like the dirtiest tactics because he loves it. Because he sees it as like a... He's a like, Jeff type, I guess. He, dude, he literally will make like videos that have nothing to do with Sword Art Online. And like he made one that's yeah. called Sword Art Online is not what this video is about. And it's literally just a review of a different show. 20,000 wow. views because Sword Online's in the title. That's some next level shit. Yeah, he doesn't give a, a Sword Art Online fuck. video. <laughs> you should. It's free. I'm it's not literally going to. Free, I'm not going views. to do it. I can't do it. You don't even have to make it actually about Sword Art Online. Just give it a title that says it's about Sword Art Online. <sighs> I don't like, know if I have it in me. <laughs> it's literally free views. And, like, Lachlan <laughs> took it to such a fucking extreme. Uh-huh. But, I mean, this is basically just, like, everyone taking the stuff that I was preaching and yeah. just going even farther with it, you know? You know, um, th- that's great and all, and then that's totally cool, but one thing I wonder about is, if everyone's just copying you all the time... Will you know, the bubble break? I yeah, think when's so. the bubble break? Well, that's why I love Mia Mafava so much, right. because when I look at... When I look at Jeff, mm-hmm. I think Jeff's got a big problem where he shills so much and everyone really hates it. People are getting annoyed, And yeah. he doesn't... I don't know if it's just because he has enough people who like him anyways that, I mean, you know... I have lots of people who hate my videos, people sure. who turn on me. So, a couple you know. of heroic YouTubers out fighting the crusade against the yeah. evil, egotistical Digibro. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. yes, a couple of uh, valiant YouTubers <laughs> who are fighting the uh, great who, battle. Who is this enigmatic man? <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> but, but like, you know, Jeff definitely has an issue where, like, he's gotten to a point where there's a significant amount of his fan base yeah. who, like, hates him His now, fan base, you know? you're saying? Yeah, like, people okay. who are big fans who are leaving him because mm. they can't take the shilling and they can't take the the constant YouTube algorithm playing, yeah, you know, yeah. like... I do it. I even tell people I'm doing it. I, I give people the blueprint of how to do it like me. That self-awareness goes a long way. Yeah, though. exactly. Yeah. And like, and, and the fact that I, I, I'm like telling people how to do it and then not doing it a lot of the time right. also It makes helps. people think you have integrity. Kind right. Of. Whereas yeah. Jeff, like people, people don't think he does, you mm-hmm. know, because uh, he's not being open about it and he's, sure. and he's going so far. And with, uh, with Lachlan, I, I mean, he's obviously just having fun and he's trying to grow his channel as big as possible. Uh, as fast as possible because he's trying to also leave you know uh, be a full time YouTuber Mm -hmm. but like I could see him adapting changing with the times but like what's so great about Mia Mavava is that you basically did it without copying me without being without copying anybody like Mia Mavava well some would argue Fantano was ripped off at a time or two (laughs) sure I mean you definitely fuck you melon head this is my shit now you you copied plenty of little things from other people but like there's some stuff in there 
the fucking Final Fantasy songs video. I can't believe I've never seen someone do that before. Yeah. Like just sing the background music of their video. That's the funny thing about me. I am a genius, but I am such a perfectionist that all my genius ideas get bottled up and they don't right. come out. Which is why something like me and Mafva is such a great thing for a guy like me. Right. Well, and it's such a good testing ground because like I watched that video and like. I don't think it worked just because the yeah. the the pitch the mixing was, too was close. fucked. Yeah, yeah, it was messed up. But like, I was like, but this is a formula you could you could do with anything. Like, you could have a whole channel that's just this. Yep. You know, yep. like, uh, like I'm thinking about Smooth McGroove. Yeah. That dude's been around for like five years now, mm -hmm. and he makes one kind of video, right. which is a dude singing a cappella in eight different screens, like. Mia Mafava, there's probably about seven video templates in there in total, mm -hmm. and any mm -hmm. one of those could have been a whole channel. Right. You know, like you could have a whole channel of super energetic workout guy reviews random manga. Yeah. You could have a whole That'd channel of like Nate does let's plays or whatever. You the know, great like, thing about it, uh, yeah, that's really cool. I, I do like that about it. And the great thing is, people are really starting to get invested as, in me as a person, as like right. a creator, and they see legitimately. That I like, I'm not, I'm not fucking around. I've got a lot of fucking ideas that I want to share with. It was people. really the Angel's Egg video that where I like, yeah. where it, it was like, it was all crashing down on me, yeah. like that. I was like, oh my god, I didn't realize that I desperately want a video from Nate every day. Yeah, like, yeah, like I, because I, <laughs> I just have always thought that you would never do this. Yep. Like, the whole time I've known you, you've been the perfectionist guy, the I spend six months on a video guy, and all those videos are great, but, like, I don't know, I guess when you see someone doing that, you kind of assume that the, like, the the amount of time spent is a consequence of the greatness. Like, right. like you couldn't make a great video in three days. You mm -hmm. have to put in that much work. Right. And then seeing me and Mafava, it was like, no, this guy could do it. Like, he could, you could put out videos as frequently as I do. Mm -hmm. And they'd be at least as good as mine, you know? So, like, yeah, that yeah. was kind of the, the, the thing. And it was Angel's Egg that brought that on me. That I was like, he's just talking unscripted about this movie. And I'm super interested, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. uh, especially because it was a movie that... I'm sorry for talking so much through Nate's interview. Not that any of the audience expected anything else. This is relevant. This is yeah. relevant. Yeah, but, but everyone knows. Everyone knows what to expect. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> but, uh, and I talked to you about this. Right. Fucking Demolition D. Mm. Yeah, Two yeah. years ago, announced he was going to do an Angel's Egg analysis, and he was working on it. And like, this dude talked. I mean, he talked about it forever. He was like, "It's one of his favorite movies." And I watched Angel's Egg in like 2008, um, yeah, while like barely awake, and like I didn't understand any of it. Right. I just watched it. And I was like, "Well, that was fucking weird." Sure was. And I had no <laughs> idea what happened. Right. I mean, I thought it was cool, but. No real opinion. Mm -hmm. um, I just went, oh, it's another Mamoru Oshii thing, because they're all like that. So quirky. Yeah. 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 So, like, he's saying he's going to do this, and I was super hyped for it. I was mm -hmm. like, dude, fuck yeah, because he's only really done, like, one serious analytical video, which was the Ava versus Rebuilds, right. which yeah, was a yeah. great video series. Sure was. Mm -hmm. So I was like, man, I'm so hyped for Demo to get, like, legit again, you know? And uh, he was talking about it, and then he kept putting it off to do other things, to do, like, fucking... Himoto Imaru-chan, who the fuck cares? That video is a little bit of a disgrace. No, yeah. I take it back. I love you, Demo. Please come back. I worship you. <laughs> but, 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 like, he, he'll come back and do, like, a little thing here and there, and then he yeah. just, like, blinks off the map. And the thing is, I was following his Twitter, and he was, like, mm -hmm. he literally can... I mean, he's gone. He's gone. Been over a year yeah. since his last video. Yeah, and, the, and he, has, he doesn't even tweet anymore, or, or live really? stream. Really? Like, no, he still live streams. That's not does true. He? People, okay. Yeah, he does, he does stream. Well, he, he, for a while, like, he was talking about the Angel's Egg video on Twitter, and he was, like, posting screen caps of, like, I guess there was some kind of compression problem with this video, so it kind of had, like, artifacts in it. Oh, so he gave up on the project. Yeah. Like a pussy. Like, 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 he, he couldn't Whatever. figure out how to encode the video right, and, like, yeah. uh, I think he lost some of it at some point, and then okay. just, like, gave up. I mean, and then, I, I would feel the temptation to give up at a point like that, yeah, too. Yeah, I even, like, brought it up to him in, like, Nino's live streams that he was in. I was like, hey, when's the Angels Egg video coming? He's like, uh, I don't know, man. Yeah. Like, And so I'm sitting here, like, two years later, like, I really wanted this video because no one else has stepped up and explained Angels Egg. Yep. Uh, and I've had people ask me to do it. I've people like, hey, you ever thought about doing a video on Angels Egg? And I've told them, Demo's working on one. Right. So I'm not going to do it because he's going to do it. And he already has, like, if I just go watch this movie... 
and like try to make an analysis like who's to say if i'm even going to find the real meaning of it like this dude clearly found something meaningful and that's why he wanted to make a video mm -hmm. Which you also did. I mean, I, so, full disclosure, I did research to right. understand what was going on. It's not like I understood it immediately. But myself. you watched it and desperately wanted to understand. Like as soon as I finished, I was like, I need to know what the like, fuck is going on. Because you you care yeah. a lot about Yoshitaka Amano's art. Yeah. Um, you are obviously very this is into the, the best visuals Yoshitaka of Amano film. Yeah. So, ever. and I, Bloodlust, the one that ruined my life, is another one, and I'm yeah. saying this one's better. So there you go. Did you ever watch A Thousand One Nights? No, I but I really want to. I will one time. Yeah. Um, at some point. But yeah, so so you come out with this video, and it's like, are you saying it's better than Angel's Egg? I'm just I'm just totally. No, 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 no. Okay. It, it's just it's just pure. It's like no narrative whatsoever. It's just like crazy animation. Knowing that going in, it sounds great. I'll love yeah. it. Yeah. It's watch like it. 20 minutes of nonstop insane Yoshitaka Amado. It looks like he animated it himself. That's what's good about Dude, it. Dude, like seriously, yeah, that like, sounds sick, seriously, bro. Like. Okay, all right. But <laughs> but um, you know, you make this video yeah, and like. Yeah. It's just a vlog. Yep. But I didn't understand this movie and now I do. Yep. So to me, that was worth as much as Demo's video ever would have been. Like, yeah, this is not like all the all the Holden reviews, like whacking yourself off, animating the like fucking words moving around yeah. the screen. Who the fuck gives a shit? Yeah, just, exactly. No like, no no hate on you, Holden. I just think you're wasting your time with that shit, dude. <laughs> total hate on you, Holden. I'm not I, I got <laughs> no hatred for the guy. <laughs> um anyway. Like yeah, like, sure, it's not, like, a super rewatchable, like, piece of art YouTube video. Yeah. But it, I got something out if of it in a big way. anyone wants to watch way, a fucking YouTube yeah. video about what the fuck Angel's Egg is about, you can yeah. watch the video. By the way, uh, if people commented, and, and I, as I was doing other research, like, there are alternate interpretations. Uh, like, there's this whole thing about how you really can make a strong case for how the anime is, like... And it's not like it excludes, like, my interpretation at all. It's just, like, there's multiple layers here. You right. can also say that it's all about, like, masculine and female relationships. And you can say, like, like it's this woman, it's this little girl, like, protecting her egg. And then, like, a strong man comes along and, like, shatters it, robs her of, like... With the a things, huge With a giant weapon. fucking, yeah. you know, schlong. And, yeah. like, then she, she immediately, like, turns into an adult, dies, and then, like, eggs are produced. So, like, she's, like, sacrificed for, right. like, you know, the future of mankind or whatever so like there's tons of parallels you can make to that shit too but i mean i, I as i admit it it's what i got out of it yeah. like it's my interpretation and I'm, I'm sure they put lots of loaded imagery into it just to be able to have all those different interpretations without a doubt you know without a doubt um like that that kind of symbolism is pretty fucking blatant you know yeah, like yeah. oh uh, oh an egg and a huge weapon hmm what could these represent i wonder yeah you know? but like <laughs> That video, it even gave me more confidence in my own stuff because, like, yeah. a problem I have is that I make shitloads and shitloads of vlogs. Right. And, like, I'm always explaining something I've already thought about. And so I watch the video back and I'll be like, okay. And then I'll post it. And then, like, a day later, I'm like, this is worthless. Why did I make this? Yeah, this is right. so stupid. But then I watch something like the Angel's Egg video and I'm like, okay, this – like now that I'm outside of myself mm -hmm. and like watching someone else do what I do, I get why people enjoy it. Right. You know, like I, like because you already know what you're trying to say, so you explain it, and you're like, who the fuck cares about this? Uh, but dude, it's like well, for the, the audience, thing. if they don't know this stuff, then it's like to them, it's a total mind blow. That, that's a know? struggle I go through with every single video, and like considering yeah. that, like me and Gabe have talked about this a lot. Like the fact that we work on a video for so long, like that feeling only gets worse. The longer you're looking exactly. at the same idea you came up with six months ago, that's why I, it's brutal. That's why I keep my fucking work uh, schedule so tight because it's like. Smart. Like you I, really have to manipulate your own psychology and have a yeah. like a grip on yourself and keep yourself disciplined like, if you'd want to do that shit. There was a time I really wanted to do stuff like the the big forty five minute edited videos and like yeah. you know I can do it. I did it with the part one of the Sword Online uh, uh, season two video. Mm -hmm. Like the reason I don't it has nothing to do with success on YouTube. Like this was before I knew that you needed to have constant content. It was entirely because. After about one week, I hate my video. Right. It happens like, to everybody. Just yeah. happening, to, like, having to hear it over and over again, you gradually are like, this doesn't make any sense. Like, does anybody get this? Like, yeah. does, am I saying anything? And in some cases, I might have even been right. Like, there's some videos I go back and watch, and I don't get the point. And I'm like, yeah. okay, <laughs> I guess I was just totally wrapped up in my own head on this one. And, like, mm -hmm. I didn't really explain things that well. But, like... 
Um, yeah, it's really dangerous. Like, the more time you spend on a video, the more you gradually come to hate it. So, like, when you do get it out there all at once, like, even if you don't get it, you know, it, if the audience likes it, then the audience likes it. Like, right, even if you're not about. sure why, you know, like, there's some vlogs I make where I'm like, I literally don't know what the appeal of this is, but it's got 10,000 views and it's got all upvotes and the commenters like it and nobody's bitched on me on Patreon that I'm not making good enough content. So I guess it's fine. That's kind of the know? funny thing about living the Patreon lifestyle. Like, really, I mean, I always, I well, I don't really say this all the time, but I, I'm always thinking that, like, if you're making like ten billion, whatever you're making like ten thousand dollars a month on Patreon, but like what you make is like something that seems worthless. Like you make yeah. one fucking MS Paint drawing, just as, whatever as an example. Uh, you're a postmodernist artist and you make shitty MS Paint drawings once a month and you make ten thousand dollars. Like people might be angry about that or be concerned, but. That seems silly to me. It is purely a contract between you and the people giving you money. If right. they are satisfied, that is literally the only thing that matters. And which is which is why, I, I mean, to a certain extent, I don't really like that people can just see what you make on Patreon. But you can hide that. I know you can hide it, but even doing that is kind of like, you have to make a choice to hide it. And I think the audience will resent. I mean, because I personally would be a little suspicious just, I don't even know why. I think I'd only be suspicious if it changed from what, like, if you started off that way, which yeah. some people do, then, mm -hmm. it, like, like, I don't like the idea, really, of people knowing how much money I make. It, yeah. it rubs me the wrong way a little bit. Because, I mean, definitely you weird fucking people out it. there don't tell everyone how much you make. Right. But there's an accountability Well, it's not, thing, it's not normal to, to have your, your paycheck known to everybody. And yeah. really, it should just be, but, like, People shouldn't be basing their patron pledges on how much you've made. It should total, be based on how know? much you value the content right. and nothing Which else. Which is something that we all absolutely do. Like you, right. you don't patron anybody, but like the rest of me and Ben have both done this. Where like mm -hmm. we see someone reach a certain amount and we're like, well, he's already making enough money. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Like, uh, God, who did I do that to recently? I, I've done it to a lot of people. Like, yeah. like, like when they pass me. And I go. That's eh, that's really that's not know. how it should work. That's right. not how it should work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that that's why the yeah the version of Patreon where it hides the money is great because it still yeah. shows the goals. Like it says, oh, we've we're eighty percent to our goal. You don't need to know what my goal is yeah. because it's what's comfortable for me. It's not what's comfortable for you. Right. You know, some people will be like, Ugh, how come you need two thousand dollars a month to I live? I need to fucking you know? live, nigger. Goddamn <laughs> exactly. it! I need to survive <laughs> in this fucking earth. Oh man, I I really get fired up about this issue. People like. Like, this is a big thing on 4chan. This is one of the things that I hate about 4chan. Like, yeah. how... It's not that they're, like, anti e -celeb. Like, that, you can hate e -celebs all fucking day. That's fine. It's that they resent people for making money online, making right. content. It's because they are just so fundamentally wrong in their basic assumptions that, like, what they're making is not valuable. And it's... That's just so wrong. It's like, why aren't you giving your money to fucking, I don't know, Comcast? Like, they deserve your money. Or... Uh, I don't know, like anything Comcast else. Comcast doesn't deserve anyone's that's, money. Yeah, that, that's that's a bad example. But like, <laughs> uh, you should be fucking giving it to like some estab. Give it to fucking I don't know, uh, uh, well, Fox News for, or for, whatever. For me, for example, yeah. give it to the anime staff. Don't pay the guy who's just talking about anime. Pay right. the people who make right. the anime. But for a lot of people, um, I'm giving them more than what the show is. Like, I, yeah. I mean, for me personally, I'm obsessed with analysis videos and like. With video games in particular, I don't play games. Mm -hmm. I just watch videos about games. <laughs> right. Like, I think I beat two games last year, and that's, like, it. I played through Doom and Dark Souls 3, and that was it. This is reminding me of how excited I am now that BMF is done. I can finish playing Demon Souls, and I can beat Hollow Knight. Oh, oh my you haven't God. beat Demon Souls? Of course, I beat it many times, but oh, okay. I'm playing it again, because I love yeah. it so much. <laughs> it's perfect. It's going to be it's great. It's a perfect game. It is perfect. Gibbo's video about it. Everyone go to Hippocrit. I haven't seen that yet. I didn't get the chance. Oh, dude! You should read, watch the video, and look at Jesse's comment from uh, from oh, didn't the he furnace leave, room. Like a giant. It was a giant novel-sized comment. It was fucking great. Why? Shout out to what? Hippocrite Why and he write a Jets. novel like comment because he liked the video so much. <laughs> okay, he should just make That's a video awesome. out of literally that comment. <laughs> it would be great. <laughs> That's excellent. I love you, hippo. I, that's that's another thing I love about the PCP is we all mm. love each other's shit so much. Yeah, we do. In spite of the fact that like, and this is funny because Jesse's always advocating for the death of the PCP, but like yeah. I don't know if people understand why, and it's because the PCP podcast brings out the worst of our interactions. Sometimes, where yeah. like it's because we overstuff it. Mm. There's we always end up letting too many people in. We're working we're, on. We're it. never we're working hard. On it. Yeah. Like the last one I was on. <laughs> 
there was f- there was like five people scheduled to be on, and mm-hmm. then Hippo just would not not be on. Well, like we, I'm sure we agreed that he would be no, on. He just complained all day. Like like Hippo complained. Yeah, Hippo's not a complainer. It's because you weren't you weren't there. Yeah, okay. And like maybe like, I missed it. Like yeah. you and Ben weren't around. Mm. Um, and you were like we were waiting for you guys. Mm. And Hippo was like, "Oh, I really want to be in this one." And we were like. There's already five people signed up. Your name's not in the thing at all. And he's just like, yeah, but I really want to be in this one. And we were like, well, maybe Ben won't show up because he hasn't gotten there yet. I want Hippo to be involved in everything I do. He's, yeah. He's so wonderful. That's the only reason none of us kicked him out because we always wanted there. Who could deny Hippo? But then Hippo? we ended up with a six-person podcast that yeah. turned into a clusterfuck and people always argue. And then everybody – I mean, I never do, but like – a lot like Ben or Jesse, mm-hmm. if we get if they get mad in the podcast, that is real anger that stays with them That's all true. day. That's like true. they will keep bringing it up how mad they were about that <laughs> argument, you know, and yeah. like and it, it it you know mixes our audiences in annoying ways. Tons of memes and bullshit and the the awful PCP fan chat <laughs> that probably shouldn't exist. You guys hate it more than I do. I, I'm in there all the time. I just poke my head in every once in a while. I find them I find them totally inoffensive. But 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 all this stuff like springs out of the PCP. Yeah. But when yeah. you when you look past that and it's just like us as friends watching one another's videos, we are just like on each other's dicks. Like yeah. it's yeah. burst linking all fucking day. <laughs> it's true. Like half of the PCP <laughs> chat when any, if any of us actually makes a video, mm. the PCP chat is just all of us talking about how fucking great the other person's video That's is. That's true. Particularly if it's you Hippo or Jesse. Yeah. yeah like yeah. we all kind of, you know, those are the ones that we're all like particularly invested in. No, might... Nobody cares about me and Mumkey's videos because we post so much that nobody can possibly yeah, give a th- shit. That's the thing. That's the only thing. <laughs> like, I don't blame anyone. Neither does Mumkey. It's like, no, we post like four videos a day. I can't like, expect anybody to care. W- currently, one of my favorite videos in the world is Mumkey's uh, like Yu Gi Oh! Dual Destiny playthrough. Oh, you and watch that shit? Every morning when this. I wake up, I on my way to work, I listen to that shit and I fucking love it. It's so good. Mumkey. Do that forever. It's my favorite. I prefer the Spyro playthrough. That's done though, right? Or is that still going? No, he's, he started at the second game, but he's only done one. I think he said I was supposed to be the first guest. That motherfucker hasn't invited me on. Me neither. Shit. I still haven't been on. He did. He did one with Sheep over, and that's the I, only one. I, I did saw see so that. Far. The fuck is Spyro. I Yu Gi Oh. Yu Gi Oh forever. <laughs> that's what I want. I can't do the Yu Gi Oh ones because because I won't watch it. Like because I, I kind of watch it a little bit with yeah. me. I my way of watching Mumkey was that for a really long time mm. I was always getting a sandwich like for lunch uh-huh. like at like Wawa Subway or sandwich, Subway sandwich getting the deluxe secret U- usually Wawa uh-huh. but like I'd go get a sandwich and I'd come back and like it takes me exactly like eighteen to twenty minutes to eat a sandwich <laughs> so okay. I'd always watch like the latest Pokemon Nuzlocke video. Um, but then uh, I got sick of the Nuzlocks because same fucking shit every yeah, single Mumkey, time. Yeah, Mumkey, you got boring with those, but he fixed it by making Yu Gi Oh videos. I like the spiral. Ben, finish your fucking Nuzlocke, you piece of shit. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm listening. literally the biggest fan, and uh, fuck you. You're the only one, I think, who watches all of Ben's Nuzlocke. I love those fucking Nuzlocke so They're really so well much. made. I just don't have time. I got I got nothing but time, dude. When I'm at work, uh, well, I mean, when I'm at work, I just have a lot, because I'm working on code, I have a lot of time to listen to podcasts right. and just veg out and, and, you know, do my work. So it's perfect. It's great for consuming YouTube stuff. Right. All right. Well, to get us back to our yeah our our uh, chronological timeline. Right. Get us into your college years. Okay. So what did you to, study? I went to the College of New Jersey originally as like an open options science major because I wasn't good enough to be on like the pre med track. So I was like, and I, I might have just not been decided, but I I was not that great a student. I was like a. I was like a B kid. I was like a B kid. And uh, I'll, I'll jack myself off and say it's because I was like bored and didn't give a shit. Right. Maybe I was just dumb. Who the fuck knows? Um, but uh, so I, I go to college looking into science stuff in general. It takes me like a year or two to decide. And so I wasted all that time. Took a bunch of classes I didn't need, which is why I um, spent took so long to get my fucking degree. Yeah, you took like six years to it get It took me eight and a half eight, years. Eight and a half to get total. a bachelor's. That's correct. But I was, That's a lot. That's it's, literally it, double the time it's supposed to take. It is, a, it is a long time, but in my defense, like it's not like I was taking full classes. Like I was working full time at various you know jobs while I was finishing up like one class per semester uh, after I left full time schooling, and like I, I made money overall. But like it, there was there's a life cost. Like that was a that was like the worst time in my life doing yeah. that shit. It, so you 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 
you lost all your souls. Or what's a good metaphor here? What's a good video gamey metaphor for the draining effect this it had? Was, it was like it you was were like, cursed. It was you like, were gaining lots of souls, but you had a curse on you. It, it, that that's true, and it would just get my HP bar would be yeah. get lower. Like before they patched Dark Souls One, it just yeah. kept <laughs> getting lower. Back in those days, and I would I would walk up to my I'd be in the catacombs, you know, when you, when there's the basilisk there, yeah. I would see my soul pile there, and I'd be like, I'm gonna get to it, I'm gonna get to it this time to reclaim all my souls, and then I would die, and uh, all my souls. <laughs> Be gone, no way to recover. And them. your HP is cut in half. And my HP keeps getting cut in half. Yeah. That was fucking brutal. That was that was sick though. I like yeah. that. Um, <laughs> in any case, um, so eventually I settle on computer. Not Hold even on. computer science. Did you play Dark Souls early enough to have the original version of the fire fucking lava place? What's it called? Isolith. Isolith. Lost Isolith. Um, actually, my friend got into Demon Souls right when it came out. Yeah. But all of us played it, and all of us were like, this is shit. This game fucking sucks. Oh, yeah. The version I'm playing right now was bought, like, like the year that it came out. And, uh, like, none of us, none of my friends appreciated it at the time. We all thought it was garbage and didn't get it at all. And it was, like, it was, like, well after Dark Souls 1 was out. Like, the hype had started to build. So you probably didn't play original Lost I Isleth. Probably not. Why? Like, what was different about it? Well, when it, when the game shipped, Lost Isolith, which is a, the shittiest level in the game, but originally... Everyone says that. I think it's okay. I don't know. The, I mean, the, the, the demon legs are shitty, and... Yeah. Uh, that, well, the, yeah, originally, sucks. those all had, like, a giant aggro range. Yeah. So, like, the whole way through Lost right. Isolates was just constantly <laughs> fighting those, like, one after another in packs. Those like, do suck ass. And then they... But then they patched it and just made it so they have no aggro range. So now Lost Isolate is, you just run through. You know, you I know? remember playing that, and I remember them all getting aggroed. So I think I did play the original version. I literally fought none of them. Oh, I, I fought all, them. yeah. Like, they would all if run at us. If you fought them all, then you played the original. We fought them, and the way that we beat them was, because I played this with my friends back in college, like, they would all, like, attack us, but they would hit each other, and they would just kill each other. And that's oh, how that's we managed cool. to get through. Yeah, Man. that's probably what they intended, but it was just like it didn't work well enough, and it was too hard. And they not they a great it. level, not a great level. No, it's definitely the worst level of the game. You think they'll ever like remake it? Because like they've said, like yeah, we just didn't finish it. We just yeah. didn't have time. Ah, whatever. Who cares? Anyway, so you're losing all your souls going through college, right? Um. Uh. So, but, but before that, my my four years in college were were pretty good. I um, so around mm, latter half of like sophomore year. Uh, I get into like games development with my with my buddy Rich and uh, my buddies uh, John uh, and Mike and Femi and uh, Mike. Wait, I don't talk wait, to you so had much. a Rich and a Mike, mm -hmm. and you almost had a J. You had John. Yeah, but you're close. Why you was almost that? had Red Letter Media? Like you had almost <laughs> all of them. That's true. It was close. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, like we, I was friends with. Let me see. I didn't know any of them at first. But uh, one fateful day at Anime Club, um, we were... I don't know why they were there. Like, they, none, none of these guys were as big anime buffs as... Okay, so it was me, and I'm just describing this because I want to jack off myself about my, my friends Rich and, uh, you know, Rich, Femi, and John. So one day at Anime Club, uh, uh, John and Rich, I believe, happened to be there, and we just met, and we talked, and we became friends. We, were, like, went back to their place, played Smash Brothers, became friends. It was great. I believe it was the next year... We were at my townhouse uh, where I lived, and I would live there with John. And down at the end of the hall was this guy, Femi, this little Chinese kid in his own place, in his, like, his own room. And um, I don't remember how, but I believe it was a discussion about Melty Blood was going on. And he overheard. His ears perked up when he heard Melty Blood. It was like, <laughs> Not something fellow... you hear a lot about. Yeah. If my... you hear about Melty Blood and you know what it... I mean, I've, yeah. I've like played literally one match of Melty Blood at uh -huh. NecoCon before. Yeah. yeah. I don't even know what the characters are in the game. I just know it's all, They're all type uh, moon characters. Yeah, uh, Tsukihime, like, you, got, you like, got Earth or whatever her name is. My point is that I don't even like type moon. Yeah. I don't like highly technical fighters. And still, if people were talking about Melty Blood near me, I'd be like, whoa, are it's, you guys talking about Melty Blood? It's a blood? certain type <laughs> you know? of person who would yeah. talk about Melty Blood <laughs> exactly. that you know that they're in your wheelhouse. So, and we like... To, to clarify for our audience, yeah, Melty yeah. Blood is like like a... F Tight Moon fighting game. Yeah, it's but it's like, it's like a doujin game, right? Like, it was sold at, like... I don't think it was ever professionally released. It's like a Kung Is that true? I didn't know that. I mean, I played it a little bit, just like fighting with I mean, some this, of these guys. I mean, that game's old as shit, yeah, you know? Yeah. And it was it's from the people who later went on to make Undernight Inbirth mm. and Dengeki Bunko Fighting Climax. Right, right. And, like, they became, like, a major fighting game developer. But, like, it was, like, a borderline fan game, I think. Yeah. 
yeah. uh, that they just kind of made, and with with all the Type Moon characters from like back before. I mean, well, I guess Fate Stay Night was popular at the time, but yeah, like, yeah. They, they were not the gigantic fucking thing that they are now. You right. Know? That that's true. Um, it well, was I definitely know, obscure. It was the kind of thing that if you knew about Melty Blood, you had to be like a deep level otaku. Th- kind that's of right. Guy, so that's you know? when I believe Femi, or it might have been something else, and that came up another time. But there was something that tipped off Femi to like, oh, fellow people interested in this shit, yeah. and he joined our our circle of companions, and we we all became fast friends all through the end of college. Um, so meanwhile, during this time, like me and my buddy Rich, we decided to make a video game to enter this uh, contest. Um, so, so at this point, like, yeah, we were doing like video game development. There was this new major at the school, interactive multimedia, that we were like, this is like the game design one. Let's get into it. Um, and eventually, I would like get away from that. But at the time, I was into that. I was doing a double major of that and computer science, um, just because like Rich was a very practical guy and was like, you know, you should, you know, interactive multimedia is cool and all, but you should still do some computer science. It's like yeah. you can be like an idea guy with the yeah. IMM, IMM shit, but like you're gonna want an actual job. So get the computer science degree, and that's exactly what has paid off in my life. <laughs> um, but in any case, so we decided to make a game, and we entered this. It was like a GameStop uh, funded, like full ride to this thing called Full Sail University, which is like a game design school in Florida, I want to say, so somewhere around. And uh, we were competing to win it. And we, we finished our... It took us a full year working on this game, but we did finish it. And incidentally, you can play it. If you go to my Twitch, it's like twitch.com slash definitely best guy ever. There's like videos of us playing it. Oh, you know what? It's on, it's on Bestie Boy as well, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. Go to, go to yeah, like... Yeah, full play these on Bestie Boy. You find it on Bestie Boy. And there's like links to it if you want to play it. It's this, uh, it's this RPG maker. Uh, we made it like RPG maker XL or whatever like the fancier one was. Uh, where you, it's like a mystery puzzle game, basically, with a couple bit, little bits of action in it, and it's uh, it's really fun. Uh, I'd call I'd it an adventure it. puzzle game. like it, Adventure puzzle, sure. If you've played, like, Ib or something, it's mm. along those lines. You know Ib? I, not a fan, no. Oh. We were inspired a lot by Firefly. That, or not Firefly, um, oh, uh, what's the Jonathan Blow game that was super famous? Braid. Braid. We were heavily inspired by Braid. Uh, and Rich was really the one who like had the idea for what the game was going to be. I was mostly the puzzle designer. I didn't. I couldn't program for shit. I'm still not a great programmer, even though it's my job that I do every day. Uh, uh, <laughs> he was the one in charge of doing all the what I consider the hard stuff, and I designed puzzles. So I was the idea guy where that shit's concerned. In, in any case, we finished it. We didn't win, but we loved making it. And Rich decided to go off to another school that he finished, and he got like a. It's it's the one that has like an affiliate with uh, Nintendo up in Washington State. Oh my god, your friend works for Nintendo? He doesn't actually work for Nintendo, but <laughs> I, I visited him in Seattle a while ago. Like, many of his friends work for Nintendo, and, like, Reggie works in that town and lives there. Right. Like, there, it's that's Nintendo Central in America. <laughs> does, does he see v- Reggie out, like, eating bagels at breakfast and be like, Yo, Reggie, what up, dog? Is your body ready for breakfast, <laughs> Reggie? <laughs> no, but, like, there was a, there was a, a friend of his, this girl, um, his name was... Wait, is he the now. one who originated My Body is Ready, or did yeah, he Yeah, that just... was Reggie. He was, like, he was, like, getting ready to do Wii exercise, or, like, Wii Fit. Uh-huh. He just said, like, are you ready? My body is ready. That was, yeah, that was him. Wow. Yeah, that's an old school one. I didn't know that that's where it came from. Yep, it's all Reggie. Um, that's one of my favorite memes. I say it all the time. Really? My body. It's well, I usually say my body is lady, which is a compound meme. Right, right. From Idolmaster. You know this that. one. Yep, I've seen it's, that one. It's for, for the audience, it's uh, the Idolmaster opening song. They say, are you ready? I'm ready. Which is literally, are you ready? I'm lady. <laughs> so so to me, it's... Dumbasses. My body is lady. So that's how I say it. Um, okay. Well, in any case, so so yeah, as you can see, I, I had an interest in games design in a big way. I was in like the game design club that my friend Andy started. Magic Circle is what we called it. Um, that was cool. I had like a little team. We actually developed this phone game. Uh, we did this thing called a... We did a, a game jam, which is like a 48-hour game yeah. development thing. Crunch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had this idea. Finding for... of Isaac started as a game jam. Yeah, as we learned hey, from Florian. Florian uh, Shout out to you, dog. Um, there was a uh, oh, what was I saying? Oh, there was a game jam, and I came up with this idea for a game called Monochrome, which is um, it's like, what's it like? It's a bit like Bejeweled, okay. But the idea is so you've got a field full of multicolored gems, and if you look at like a color wheel, you know how there's like it goes from like purple leads to red leads to orange, leads to yellow, leads to green, to blue, back to purple, in like a circle like that. 
So the idea behind this game was that you would click on something like purple, and if there was either one like next to that color on the color wheel, either red or blue, if you clicked from like purple to one of those, it would like consume that color. So, like, the idea was, it was a puzzle game where you would kind of um, eventually spread your color to, it didn't matter what color, but you could, like, end the game with all the blocks as one color, was the basic idea of it. And we actually developed a functional phone app of this game uh, that I don't have anymore, I think it got deleted, but it, it's, it's on my, like, drive somewhere, so I can install it again. It's pretty fun, we never finished it, we wanted to make it, like, a full release, but uh, I, I guess as many game, aspiring game devs did, it never yeah. uh, got out the fucking door. Um, but in any case, cool concept, though. Yeah, I, I really liked it. It was really good, and it was actually pretty damn fun. Uh, don't don't steal that audience. I'm gonna make that. It's my idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay, so I was big into game design. Uh, oh, incidentally, my theater stuff didn't work out from high school because right. my grades weren't good enough, and my dad forbid me to do any more theater uh, because he was like, "You're spending too much time on theater." Even though the real problem was that I was fucking around and like not doing my homework and just right. didn't give a shit. It just I was just a very lazy guy, you know. Just didn't give we a shit about are. what I was doing. I mean, that's school for you, right? Right. Well, that's that that's school for you, taking you away from the thing that you're actually passionate about yeah. because it's because it's supposedly distracting you from the bullshit that will never matter in your life. Yeah. Like, hey, which set of skills do you think is benefiting you on Patreon right now? The theater skills <laughs> or the fucking whatever bullshit you had to do in high school skills? Yeah. Yeah, Fair question. I think it was the theater skills. A little bit, a little bit. Yeah. I'm a bit of a what do you, showman. What, what do you think, uh, you think, you think you've got all those patrons from fucking knowing how to, like, like, uh, history of English <laughs> or some shit? No. Yeah. You got nah. it because you gave an impassioned speech about the human bullshit while wearing a Picard <laughs> yeah. outfit. You're literally in costume in that video. Yep, it was great. Um, that Picard costume was a good investment. Or it's not, yeah. a, it's a, it's a... Standard issue uniform, captain uniform. Yeah. So uh, incidentally, there you go. tight fit on me. Yeah, <laughs> not it's easy. A little, to it's a little bit of a tight fit on me, to be yeah. honest too. Yeah, but it's good that it's a tight fit on you. I guess that's true because it, it makes your chest look fucking huge. That's true. It does. On me, it makes my tits look fucking huge. My <laughs> nipples were literally poking through that. <laughs> Disgusting. Yeah. Um, okay, so in in any case, so theater was out. Um, and I was just doing, like, game design stuff. I, I guess my grades were okay. I was never a great student really, at any point in my life other than when I was, like, a little kid. And I could just coast by right. by, like, being kind of smart. Same. And, yeah, that's just how it worked out. And uh, never had any drive to do any of that shit. Uh, but in any case, like, another thing that happened to me in college that was a big deal is that I finally got a girlfriend. I got a girlfriend. And this was a revolution. Uh, it was... It was kind of a formative experience in my life um changed me well actually getting the girlfriend didn't change me at all i was totally the same guy uh, up to that point i was still this like shy vampire hunter d loving uh you know did you still have cool long kid. hair I, I at that point i never had hair that long again down to my waist but i had it down to like shoulder length right i've got kind of wavy hair so it was kind of like curled around which was like whoosh, i don't know yeah. um and this girl inexplicably was into me because I was the biggest fucking pussy. Such, like, I let this girl walk all over me. And, like, not to shit on her. She was fine. But I was not a man. I did not do the things a man needs to do, as in, assert yourself in any way. Yeah. Like, I have a tendency to kowtow to people and try to please people. And, like, that's, t nobody wants that in a relationship. It's fucking shit. So, um, you know, the relationship was mutually unsatisfying and went on for like a year and a half until she dumped me, rightly so. Um, she, however, did not sex me, and that is a big problem. You we'll dated never... for a year and a half and didn't fuck. Yeah, well, she gave me a couple handies, you know, so that was nice, but What's... that's not... She's willing to give you a hand job. why not? Because, she's, because she leap? was a big weirdo Christian. Oh, okay. And, that, you know, there were two two things, and this, this is cool, there were two things that I stood up to her on. One, I would constantly laugh at her when she talked about her Christianity, which I fucking love. That's great. <laughs> and and the other one was, she worked as hard as she... Fu she worked that little white ass as hard as she could to make me admit that Eris was the better girl for Cloud, and I never gave in. It's Tifa... For life, you stupid whore bitch. Never giving you that. You will never get the satisfaction. Eris is fucking dead. Tifa was Cloud's destined girl from the start. You idiot. So uh, on those two fronts, I retained my manhood. Um, and everything else, I was a big pussy bitch. <laughs> 
She, she, no, I really don't blame her <laughs> at all. You really stood for yourself on the issues that matter. I, I know, I know. <laughs> um, so, uh, I, I mean, the whole girlfriend thing was actually, it's, it was a big deal for me. Uh, so, you know, this was me desperate, and I, I, I can admit this, I didn't give a fuck about this girl. Uh, you know, I, I just wanted to have sex, desperately. It was a huge deal in my life, and never happened, and I was extremely upset when the relationship ended, and I'm like, I just dated this girl for like a year and a half, and I know this kind of sounds like a psycho, but it's what I was honestly it does thinking. It if you're a fucking 23 year old virgin, and yeah, yeah, even, it's how like, old were you? 20? God, I was, um, no, I was like 20, 20, I was like, dated her from like 19 to 20, that, okay. that range, more or less. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was real, real fucking bad, real fucking bad. Uh, but in, in any case, uh, so eventually, between junior and senior year, a grand opportunity arose for me to travel abroad. Because, actually, one of the main reasons I chose to go to the College of New Jersey is because they had a motherfucking Japanese language program. And that was, like, number one on my list. Needed that shit. And I'm, it was by far the best thing about that school. I fucking loved taking Japanese there. Reading those fucking Genki books, practicing vocab... God, I miss. I I want to do more desperately, but um, so I gotta buy some Genki books like immediately. We gotta talk about that later too. Yeah, because me and you are planning We've a possible thing, and uh, and my new girlfriend also wants to learn Japanese. Dude, and don't I'm, bring your fucking no, girlfriend no, no, into no. I'm shit. not gonna bring her into our our okay, thing. Okay, I'm just saying that or I'm so, or I'm I'm very quickly becoming surrounded by people who want to learn Japanese as badly as I right, do. Right, and this is the perfect time. Like, I need to learn this language. I'm going to kill it's myself time. if I don't learn Japanese by the time I'm 30. Like, by if 30? I'm not fluent by the okay. time I'm 30, I will fucking kill myself. Yeah, that's a high bar. Go for conversational, like high-level conversational. No, no, no. I got to be fluent by the time I'm 30. You don't have that 30. much time to get fluent, else, dude. I, it takes a long time to get fluent. Five years is plenty of I, Well, we're, yeah, we're, not, now. we're not fucking beginners at Japanese. Well, that's true. We both took three years, you know. I took four years. I took three. I win. And, and I'm I've, a better I've, Japan. I've been watching anime for 15 years. I would bet your Japanese is better than mine because I have been completely That's not practicing That's pretty likely. <laughs> um, but, uh, so in any case, so I was taking Japanese, fucking loving it. Ogren Sensei and Yamashina Sensei, thank you for being there for me. I, I appreciate what you did. Because uh, I'm sure they're listening to this podcast. Yeah. Um, but in any case, oh, I was also a Japanese language teacher. Oh, but that, that was after I came back uh, from the thing I'm trying to get to. I traveled to fucking Japan and I spent two months, a whole summer in Tokyo, living the fucking good life, and it was by far the best single decision I've made in my life, except maybe deciding to start doing YouTube, and uh, it was, it was, I mean, it wasn't like a fucking magical experience, it was just one of those things where like so many opportunities opened up to me when I like took the initiative to, to get this thing done, which is why, you know, people say yes to opportunities that come before you, people. Um, so I went there, I went to Japan, and I was at this place called the, I believe it was the KCP International School, or something like that. You can, you can Google it, because they take international students, and they, um, you know, they, they teach them shit. They've got a lot of, like, Koreans, and uh, probably, like, some Filipinos. It, it's like, the school is mostly full of Europeans, and, like, a bunch of, like, you know, a couple Brits uh, and some Americans. You know, all, all a bunch of big weebs, uh, most of the Koreans, though. But in any case, they, they teach them Japanese uh, as, as good as they can. And they have a bunch of levels. I was in, like, the middle level one. I was actually in one that was a little bit too high for my actual language control ability. So I was a little bit, like, not able to keep up with things that were happening, which was a little bit shitty. But I, I it, it's because I've always had this pride. Uh, when I was in, in school, like, I was the only kid in the entire school who took every single AP class that was available. And it's because, because I would have felt angry at myself for not taking the most difficult challenge possible like i would have felt dumb and our valedictorian she didn't take every fucking ap class only me and my friend doug did and it's because i think we have this like weird maybe his parents pressured him but for me it was like no I i've got this weird um uh i don't know self-critical ego thing going on where like i need to challenge myself like the hardest thing as possible I, I don't feel it anymore but so i i did that and so I, you know when i was in japan i chose to take like this level that was definitely a little bit too hard to be 100 percent useful for me yeah. like you need to be at a level where you can actually keep up my biggest problem in japanese class is that i got a d all three years yeah i each year i had no idea what was fuck was going i never oh, knew really? what was happening oh like, that sucks that i sucks. spent my whole time in three years of japanese like, a deer in the headlights. They shouldn't have I mean, passed me. I was constantly trying to play catch-up. Like, yeah, things would blow yeah. by me and I would have to catch up. That was that was tough. 
Like, I mean, when we, in my third year, we had this yeah. Russian guy of, of Shinnikov sensei, mm-hmm. um, who, like, he had been, he studied in Russia, then he taught, like, I think he taught either English or Russian in Japan. Yeah. Then had taught in America a little bit, like, at a nicer school, then came to my school, which is dog shit, sure. you know? And, like... He gets there and like all of us are so far below the level we're supposed to be at for yeah, that, that yeah. and and like and so varying like the top students in class knew everything and the bottom students in class like me yeah. knew jack shit and so he like the whole time he was just like exploding with stress like I feel this for dude, the guy that's tough. this dude was like man he couldn't deal like yeah. it was yeah. like three layers of culture shock yeah you know? yeah. Like he'd been he'd been used to teaching at Japanese schools where kids are like super diligent. Right. And he comes here. What the and... fuck is with American schools? We are a bunch of fuck ups. Why dude. do we even have them? I don't know. Because we, we, we it, it's possible just to make us worthless. feel good about ourselves. You That's know, like probably pretend it. like we're doing something useful. Yeah. There is a certain service being served by. Uh, yeah. Go uh, listen to PCP schools. Yeah, or, go listen PCP to that one. PCP fuck school. I think it's the title of it. The fuck school. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> um. Uh. Okay. So in any case, so I went to Japan, right? And it was fantastic. The best thing about going there, though was not that... I mean, I kind of learned how to, like, be independent a little bit. Yeah. In, like, college is kind of cushiony, but, like, I lived just in, like, an apartment by myself in Tokyo for two months and had to, like, figure shit out, like, how to survive. But more importantly than that, I hooked up with this dude, Garif. And I, I think I've told this story a couple times before, but, like, me and this buddy, Garif, uh, he had yellow fever. It was ridiculous. He wanted to get yeah. laid like a motherfucker. That we both got... You described it to once as the worst yellow fever you've ever the seen. The worst case of yellow fever I've ever encountered, without a doubt. Like, he was into deep level, like, geisha shit. Like, yeah. that's what he wanted. That's his, like, ideal woman, by his, from his own mouth. Um, <laughs> deep so we would, level geisha shit. That's, yeah, man. <laughs> so he would, uh, so we would, we would bomb down to Rapongi at, like, late night. Like, even on weeknights, we would just go to Rapongi, get, get absolutely sloshed. By the way, if people don't know this, the best thing about Japan is that you can drink alcohol outside anywhere you want at any time. It's wonderful. Beautiful. Um, it's really not to be underestimated how great and liberating that That's is. That's all I'm going to do when I go to Japan. It's, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. It's cause, probably because they like trust their citizens to not fuck up and like yeah. be reasonable. Um, but it's funny because it draws a lot of tourists and like foreigners who are not reasonable. Yeah. And uh, like me and him would be, just be like puking in the streets sometimes and... <laughs> Just be being irresponsible in the club and like. How old are you at this time? Well, see, when I was in Japan, I turned twenty-one, so it was like right at that time. And by the way, the drinking age in Japan, I believe, is eighteen. It's twenty. Okay, yeah, twenty. Yeah, so I was able to drink. I I turned twenty-one when I was in Japan, so a little bit anticlimactic, but yeah, it was still a great time. I met some interesting characters, like this guy named Nash, who was like a competitive uh, MMA fighter who was like training at various dojos across Asia and was. Like, friends with some of the students at the school I was going to, or some of the teachers who would, like, help them buy plane tickets places. Can I have a slice of your apple pie? Sure. Yeah, go for it. Thank you. Um, let's see. What else is going on? Uh, so, really, like, the, the main idea that I want to talk about here is, like, my, my life changed dramatically because I developed a fixation with actually going out. Like, no longer being a pussy. Like, this was the time in my life I got really into, uh, like, pickup artist shit. And I started obsessively consuming everything I could find, specifically while I was in Japan. I downloaded tons of, like, videos and, uh, and all that kind of shit. And, like, a lot of the philosophy has stuck with me to this day. Um, though the, like, the, I don't know, like, the specifics have kind of faded. But I, I always want to defend it when I talk about it, that pickup artist shit is, like, it's about self-improvement more than anything else. Right. So, like, what I have gotten from, like, these guys, like, Tyler Durden, oh, that's, like, a, that's the guy, Tyler Sensei. He is, um, I, I mean, I call, he, I call him Tyler Sensei, but, like, it's not like he's known by that. It's just, like, I met, I found out about this guy when I was in Japan, so I started calling him Tyler Sensei, even though he just goes by Tyler in America. Uh, but in, in any case, um, like, it, it, these guys are all about, like, be, you become a better man so that you can attract better women, and, like, it's not like you're tricking anyone. It's like right. you are a better person, and the women that are into you because of that are just being given like more of a product. I think what people are, are averse to is like people are really into like destiny and uh, like they feel like yeah. I'm born this way. Fucking with that order is wrong. It's not good to improve your station. Idiots. Yeah, it's it's disgusting. Um, no, we are clay dolls that we mold through our own power to a certain degree. You know, uh, we have a certain level of influence over our own bodies. If free will exists, which I don't actually believe, but we'll put that aside for now. Um, but the point is, 
Like, this is when I, like, I, all, what this boils down to is, like, I now decided, you know what, I should actually do something because I want women in my life, and I should actually, like, work on that. Like, so nobody, I think, in their right mind would ever find a problem with that. So that's what we did. We went down to Rapongi, and our choice was to get super drunk. That's with our solution. And we would go into clubs. We would we would we would grind up on on hot Japanese women who were looking for sexy American men, and we just we kind of grew up, you know. We we became grown up guys a little bit more. Uh, it, it, neither I, I did not get laid through during my time in Japan, which was a big bummer for me. But Garf did though. Garf, and as I was saying, like he he's really into Japanese chicks. Devastatingly, he banged a Vietnamese chick. And uh, yeah, he's he regrets it intensely to this day that he, he go- when <laughs> still, he was in still Japan, yellow, still yellow, you know, on the spectrum, getting getting close to what he wants. <laughs> I'm sure by spectrum. now, this, the color spectrum is what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure by now he's banged uh, quite a few uh, uh, Japanese ladies. If his yellow fever persists, because who knows? He was actually Indian, so I, I don't know if that is relevant. But like he had yellow fever despite being Indian, uh, but whatever. Um, so, but the funny thing was, so after I came back from this wonderful time, oh, by the way, I met Moot when I was in Japan. Oh, When yeah. I was on, I was on 4chan just one day and I saw like, and a bunch of the guys who were there, you know, a, a lot of the white guys who were there were a bunch of like big weebs like me. And, um, like I saw a post one day that was just, it was the banner on 4chan. It's like, hey, I'm Moot. It was, it was like a sticky on every board. I'm going to be in Akihabara at this time. Be there if you want to hang out. And... I was like, I'm going to be there. So me and a couple of the guys, we went down there and we um, hung out with Moot for a while. And we, we went to eat. We, we met his crew. What we, did he seem like? He was like a skinny, um, I don't know. He I mean, I imagine he's super, like just a like nerdy programmer guy. That's really the impression for the most yeah. part that I got. It's that he didn't have any kind of like bombastic personality or anything. He was pretty chill. Yeah. And uh, we, we talked. And if you look around online... There's some, I don't know if you guys, if you search around, there are some famous pictures. If you search, like, Moot in Akihabara, there are pictures of me with him. And there's one of, like, that, like all his crew, like, want us to take a big, like, group photo. So we all lined up in a row. And uh, he took a big picture of all of us. And what was funny to me is that even years later, I see that photo reposted on, like, 4chan now and then. And I'm right there wearing, like, a, a Soga King from One Piece shirt that I bought in uh, at Uniqlo when I was there. And it's it, it, people label like every person in that group as like a different board. Like yeah. Mood was B. Uh, you know, like there was a girl, like a pregnant girl, like with a baby who was like CGL, uh, and just like a bunch of other. I am which one CGL? CGL the cosplay. Oh, like the slut one, the slut girl one. Right. Of course, so it fits. Uh, and I was consistently labeled as Co as the comics board. Even though you're wearing so, a one piece. Even shirt. though I was wearing, uh, yeah, inexplicably, I think it's because I had a shit eating grin. And looked confident. And I was already getting fit at this point. So my muscle definition was improving. Uh, which isn't an A why thing. Would, why would that be a co thing? Because it's not an A thing. It's not an A, a thing. I think A is more fit than co. That's bullshit. And you know it, dude. Comics and cartoons. Co has some normies. Co autism. has a decent normie population. So those people even out the fitness curve. The, a, the A's are a bunch of fucking fat weirdos. Why weren't you just fit? Was somebody else fit? I don't know if there was a fit on this whole okay. thing. There might just not have been a fit. Um... Okay, but the point I'm trying to get to, I just thought that I, that's a cool thing that happened to me while I was there. When I got back, um, like a month after I got back to school, I immediately got laid. And it was just like, I did the grind, I put in the work, did my training, and all of it paid off when like, I I, had com- I completely changed as a person when I got back. I was a way more like outgoing, willing to just do crazy shit, uh, you yeah. know, kind of get, like the guy I am now on the PCP is like post-Japan Nate. The guy from before Japan was a completely different guy. Big pussy, sucked a lot of dick. Yeah, mostly his own. Um, not a fun it, guy. I imagine. I mean, Big I think. Nerd. I think pretty much all of us on the PCP have some kind of turning point like that. Yeah. Like. Like for I you was when you realized you were gay. That was a big day for you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I, I think all of us. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know if I if I can speak for the younger guys if they've quite had like a definitive. Like I don't know how different Hippo is from how he used to be. You know, yeah, um, yeah. I'd have to ask him, but like for me, it would be pre and post BronyCon 2013. Was that the first one you went to? Yeah, yeah. So with Tom, yeah. Because like, if I, I mean, like, there's lots of moments in my life that like things change. Like me going to the Philippines would almost be comparable to you going to Japan, except that yeah. it didn't change much about my life back in America. Right. It was really 
going to BronyCon and like becoming having a moment of like thinking I, of myself as famous right. or something like or like being a personality in public and like having to respond to all these people like completely changed the way I think about interacting with random strangers sure, you know sure. like it's just you have this moment where all these people know who you are who you don't know and like all you like all they expect of you is to be cool and so, like, I'm yeah. there, and I'm like, I have to be cool for these people, you know? Like, I can't be some boring nerd for all these people who are coming up to me. I have to be, like, this larger-than-life figure who they're expecting. And so that's, like, what I became in my real life. It's like, yeah, you're I just kind of right. <laughs> transformed into, like, a, you know, a guy who thinks of himself as someone with fans, you know? You know, I remember you talking about, there was a phase in your life that I remember, I think I was just a fan of yours at the time, yeah. and it was when you were doing, like, a big purge of all your contacts, and you're like, I know yeah. too many people right now. Yeah. That seemed relevant. That was not too long after that yeah. BrodyCon. Just, I had, uh, that's just because I literally accepted everybody who sent me a right. fucking Skype request, and that's a huge mistake, and nobody should ever do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still get messages on Discord just from people, usually from the fan chat, because like I'm in there and it's yeah. easy to. Eh, I, I got no problem with that, but I just ignore them for the most part. Right. Um. And let me see. Was there anything else? Relevant I had like about that? 400 Skype contacts at the time. That's why yeah. I had to get rid of them. <laughs> I, I I'm merely going to talk about this because it it is important context into who I am, and this is like the con- the podcast about the kind of person I am. Yeah. So like this getting laid thing was, like it. I don't know. I feel like there's a tendency to like diminish it how totally the value matters. of sex. It's a it really totally important does matter thing. because it's just that you can't like even if it's not good, even yeah. if like you re- even if what you take away from it is, "Oh, I don't even care about sex." Right. You have to know. You have become like you have changed and you are now have something socially that gives you an like an an aura of confidence yeah. like you're now part of the club, you know? You're no right. longer an excluded, you know, loser. And I mean whatever. even if you only Not that anyone who hasn't had sex is a loser, you know, it's right. fine. I mean like I mean I had se- I had, you know, my ex-girlfriend and yeah. I had sex with her plenty of times. I understand mm-hmm. what it is and it was pretty good yeah uh i think i'm good at it Mm -hmm. and it's fun but like after that i spent the last three years not getting laid you know until like last week and like it didn't get any easier to make it happen again but it's just like knowing that i could that i have and can it's you know it's a world of difference yeah post virginity loss to pre virginity loss to post it, it, it is different. It's, it it's, is a, it's different. a difference between thinking, will I ever have sex? Exactly. And I know I can. I've done it before. Right. You know, I just have to put in more effort. Like, yeah. the last three years, I felt like I could I could have sex anytime I want. Mm-hmm. I just got to put in effort. And I'm not willing. Many know? of my friends are still virgins to this day. And yeah. they're, they're 26, 27, just like me. And I don't know, man. It could have been me. Could easily, If I didn't yeah. go to Japan, it would be me. It would be me. Yeah. It was... Um, and I, and I don't think I would have... These guys are my brothers. I love them to death, you know? Yeah. I, I don't know. I guess I just wish and they inc- would... And incidentally, because yeah. um, you're saying one month after uh, mm. after that's when you got laid. Yeah. It's exact same for me with BronyCon 2013. Oh, really? Because that girl, the girl who was my first girlfriend, yeah. uh, like, literally, like, BronyCon had been, like, one week before, and I'd just gotten back, and it was, like, my birthday area like right like you the were complaining about it on the on the cast yeah the and i was yeah. just talking about it on the on the pub crawl and this girl starts messaging me in the in the chat and that's how we hooked up and yeah. like a month yeah. later yeah it's there's definitely something to this effect of like just doing something that's so like something that it's not that it's out of character it, it's out of character for who you are but it's in character for who you think you should be well you know you, you know? know like back in the day i also heard describe it's like the whole thing about like the self improvement stuff that I got from a lot of the um like the they're like more like life coaches these kind of this pickup yeah. stuff but it was like uh it's you at one hundred like yeah. like you're not it's not like you can't even be someone else if you try you're always right. gonna be yourself even if you you know you can act fake or whatever but like if you're just going out there and you're just I I, I really resent this notion that people like trying to change themselves are being fake. I, re- I reject That's, that yeah. wholeheartedly. I do as well. That, that just, that stagnates people so right. hard, and I, I hate it. And it happens to a lot of, like, nerdy guys. Like, they fall for that trap hard. I did. I certainly did. Yeah. Um, but, no, don't, be don't fall into that paradigm, idiot. guys. Make yourself better. Exactly. Like, not just to get laid, but, like, for every reason. Consider like, your entire life an engineering problem. And if there are deficits I mean, that you need to improve, yeah. work on it. If you there's literally anything you're not happy with, 
then what the fuck are you doing? You know, like, fix right. that. That's right. Like, yeah. That's how every, it should be. If something's broke, you fix it. That's, right. like, uh, you know, are you going to be the guy who, uh, I don't know. Um, you watch any Casey Neistat at all? Yeah, I've seen a lot. Yeah, like what's great about Casey is he's he's got this this uh, this sort of workshop that he that he that he works the in. Workshop and is like, great. If anything is not exactly what he wants, he fixes it. He'll get a tool and just make it. Uh, yeah. He he always says like there's two kinds of people in this world: people who can build something and people who can't. You know, or people who can use their hands or whatever. Like, sure. uh, you know, if something if he needs something to be a certain way, he he immediately immediately makes it that way mm-hmm. and that's how everyone needs to get into that fucking mindset if something's broken look around you right now look around your room audience if something is broken and you've been meaning to fix it fix the fucking thing you know what's funny about fix that? it now that's entirely true that is the best way to live yeah the funny thing is i cannot necessarily adhere to that as often as i'd like to like this thing about like getting a new bed that's been yeah. like an issue for like a year. I've wanted a new bed. It's only because there was something that happened that was like a motivating factor. Like, you know, I could use a, a second bed for like a guest. Right. That's what really got me to do it. But like, then there's other things like nobody nobody asked me to make me a Mathifa. Nobody yeah. was like, hey, why don't you, you know, whatever. You recognized yeah. a, a systematic problem with your content right. and decided that it needed a solution. That's exactly right. Fixed. That's exactly right. And I mean... Uh, it's not always easy to identify what's broken, right? But there is kind of a like, for me, a lot of the time, if I'm not sure why I'm not happy, mm. I'll just go and make a bunch of different shit until I figure out what what am I missing? You know, sure. like, I mean, this trip I'm on right now, that's kind of what inspired. Like, I didn't know what the result of this would be. I'm mm-hmm. just like, hey, I'm gonna leave the house because. I've tried everything here, and none of that's working, so the solution must be out there. Yeah. So let's just go out yeah. there and drive around aimlessly until something changes. And something did change almost immediately upon leaving right. my house. Yeah. Like, it's obvious that this is what should have happened. It's like, yeah, you should have left, like, months ago. And that, you know? that's why I so value and think it's a great idea to shake up your life in a big way. Absolutely. It, at the very least, like... Things like traveling long distances, people, it's so easy to be like, I, I don't know, like if you dreamt of like going to Paris or whatever, it's like, yeah, I mean, what am I really going to exp- Oh, the fucking Eiffel Tower. Ugh, I've, I've fucking seen that in a million pictures. Actually putting in the shit to go to Paris yeah. is just, it's going to be worth it. Probably. <laughs> Probably. It's worth, oh, I mean, it's just worth the experience of figuring out how the fuck to get to Paris. And like, yeah. I mean, to me, I, like a lot of people hate travel. I love travel just because like, even when it sucks, it's interesting. Because it's just something Absolutely. new. Like, I'm the type of you're guy... You're collecting stories and life experience at a minimum that you yeah. won't get if you're sitting in your ass I'm room. the type of guy who will sit around like and just walk around the airport. Like, it, let's say I have a two-hour layover. Yeah. Um, You can compare different airports. It's interesting shit. I, I live in Norfolk. Tiny airport. Nothing there. Right, right. Then you go to New York, and you're in this giant fucking LaGuardia, LaGuardia. and there's like these huge food courts and all this crazy shit, and you... Mm. Uh, hey... Everything costs twice as much in New York because the taxes are so much higher. Yeah. And, like, just learning shit, you know? Like, you can't... You literally can't go somewhere and not learn anything. Like, right, you right. will learn something because that place is not the place you were already in. And you will inherently pick up on something even if you don't immediately recognize it. Mm-hmm. Even if it's just, like, a, a talking point. You can, uh... Walk up to some girl at the bar and be like, hey, uh, yeah, what's going on? <laughs> I went to Boston yesterday. Oh, yeah, what was that like? Oh, cigarettes are like $12 there. It's fucked up. You know, yep. icebreaker. You have something. You have something to talk about. Something's different about you, you know? You know, there is, that's entirely true, but there is nothing harder on this earth than doing a cold approach to a girl. And I've done it many times. And every single time I felt I've like never I was done dying. It. <laughs> yeah, see, I have I, I went through the fire. I've I've faced my fear and uh I haven't conquered it. It's still there. I still feel social anxiety. All the like if I want to talk to a girl, it's, it's hard, man. It's it's hard shit. Every every guy knows what it is. Um it's a skill that you have to work at if if that's the kind of yeah. guy you want to be, you know. I mean, you you could take the route of becoming a YouTuber and getting a hundred thousand <laughs> subscribers and waiting for a girl to say like, "Hey, you're cute. Let's go." Literally, have sex. the route that each of us is taking. Yeah, that's all true. The time. <laughs> it is the very inefficient. If you can avoid it, there it are is faster hyper ways. Hyper inefficient. Yeah, if you can build a career out of it too. Hey, great. Two birds with one stone. Um, wouldn't recommend it though. Go, guys, go improve yourselves and uh, go. Yeah. 
be go harass women in the street. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, I I don't even know how like like pickup culture. It's not called that anymore. Like Honestly, they call it like, other shit with with the with the whole picking up like girls through YouTube thing. Like yeah. I think it would only even work for people like us who were destined to be YouTubers anyways. Yeah. Like, yeah. like the reason it works for us is that like, we're so personality driven. Yeah. Like the, well, the, the kind of stuff that we would use to pick up a girl. It's the same stuff we'd talk about in a YouTube video. Like it, that's true. You know, I have literally seduced women. <clears throat> excuse me. I have literally seduced women by talking about one piece endlessly. Yeah. And the, they get entranced by the passion I show. Exactly. When I talk about how much I fucking love one piece. <laughs> that's it literally I mean, happened. The, I have literally gotten laid kind, off of that shit. The kinds of women who would be into us are the kinds of women who are into just guys being passionate about something. That's right. You know, I and mean, passion like, is just that's an, an attractive endless thing wells- inherently. That wellspring of something I have. Right. But, well, because it, it creates an association that if he can get that passionate that's right. maybe he can get that passionate about me maybe he can get my nut yeah <laughs> pew, 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 pew. oh god you reminded me i have to try that now oh shit <laughs> I, I totally forgot you i'm glad i reminded oh, you oh boy thank god um i got a hot date in like two weeks <laughs> great i'm gonna get in there get that pew, tragically pew. A- tragically after national sex day next <laughs> june 9th everybody Get out there and get yourself a date. Oh, God. It's also National Marriage Day. <laughs> if you see any tweets about me being, like, heartbroken, yeah. talking about how my girlfriend broke up with me, just know it was because... I can't avoid it. Yes, it's gotta be done. It's Destiny. gotta be done. Um, I'm so glad you reminded me. <laughs> so, I was, I, I was gonna say, so after I got laid the first time, uh, which was a big deal for me, I then spent the rest of senior year pursuing, like, <coughs> casual sexual relationship. Like, my... I didn't really dwell on this that much, but my heart was absolutely broken and has not recovered. I do not trust... Rela- I don't trust anyone. I do not trust anyone yeah. to do anything uh, for me. I only trust myself. I will never have any confidence in anyone ever again. Uh, I expect them to betray me at a moment's notice, so I organize my life where when they betray me, not if, yeah. uh, I will be able to survive and it won't be a big deal. So that's that's me. Um, but I was able to have a, have good times with a bunch of nice ladies senior year. You know, I had a bunch of casual things going at once, was living the dream for a while with a couple ladies. and um, And then senior year ended... And that was, you know, that was sad and all. It, nothing, none of it was, like, too tragic. It was just, it sucked to be away from my, my boys. Um, but uh, eventually, I went back to Massachusetts. And from there, I just spent my time uh, doing, like, one class at a time, working terrible, shitty jobs. Because for years, the College of New Jersey was useless at finding me a fucking internship. Where I could, like, work and make decent money with those with the skills I had developed. It took me... Four years, and of a, a con like my dad's best friend since he was like in like elementary school, happened to work for a software company and was like, "Hey, like we could you we take interns all the time from like the University of Cincinnati." So I'm living like an hour south of Boston, where you know where I grew up, and he's like, "Hey, want to move out to Cincinnati? Um, you know, uh, you have to interview and shit, but you've got decent qualifications. You can finish your degree out here at like the University of Cincinnati, and um, you know, at work and have a fucking job and not be a poor piece of shit like you have been for the last." three, four years or whatever. I was like, yes, please save me from this hell. And so I went and started, I lived out here in Cincinnati and that's what I've been doing ever since. Finished my degree a couple months ago, checked that box. And now I, my pay went up a bunch and now I make a comfortable living, live uh, well below my means and I'm spending all my money to pay off my student loans. So I'll be free. But, and then so that's where I'm at right now, like financially. But during that Three years, and this is where I wonder if maybe this was all a blessing in disguise. I heard of a little website called youporn.com, and I knew that's where my future lied. Uh, no, it was it was YouTube. So actually, it was funny. Ben, during this time, you know, my older brother Ben, remember that guy? He um he had been doing a lot of crazy shit during that time. He went to Europe. He taught uh, Polish. No, he taught English in Poland. Oh, no, no, sorry, he taught physics in Poland, because that's what he got his degree in. And he did a bunch of crazy stuff, and he eventually, like, lived in uh, California, bumming around for a while. Go go listen to the Ben interview if you want the full story yeah, of uh, Ben's tell you all that crazy-ass post-college Ben's uh, done life. some really interesting stuff with his life. 
um, despite being a useless bum. But well, it's generally because mm. Ben does not care about having a safety net. No, not at all. You and him are kind are of opposites. diametrically opposed in this regard. I wouldn't say, like, I'm very much like my dad in that respect. He is, like, and I've only become that way over the last couple years, like, since I moved out here and I've, like, been forced to become an adult. Uh, yeah, like, now I really have my shit together in a big way, and Ben does not. And I, I, I wonder if that's... But it doesn't even matter. Because he doesn't yeah. care. It doesn't. It doesn't. It he doesn't, does not. It care. does not phase him I that he doesn't he's have more his like shit my together. mom a little bit. I don't know. We're, it's a mix. This whole thing about like, oh, you're just like your mom. You're just like your dad. That's a meme anyway. But yeah. uh, in any case, so during that time, Ben was got into. Ben had been watching like, a ton of shows. Like he's always been a big consumer of media. And one show he watched was My Little Pony. That he was like, hey Nate, check out this show. And I remember when he was in, um, I believe Poland. He sent me, like, something. It might have been California or whatever. When he was far away, he sent me links to, like, the show. And I was like, I do not believe that My Little Pony is good. I believe that you are lying to me, that this is a fucking joke, that you're an idiot. And I just ignored him for a while. But eventually, like, on 4chan, people were talking about it. And I was right. just like, okay, I, maybe there is something to this thing after all. So I took Ben up on it. And the first episode I watched was Putting Your Hoof Down. And it was, like, the best on, episode of all on. time. I'll okay, describe it to you. Season two, uh, that's the, the Iron Will one, right? As made famous by Keg Standard Reviews, putting yeah. your hoof down. That's right. <laughs> and it's it's the greatest episode of anything ever. It's literally about, like, this, like, the kind of motivational speaker, sort of pickup artist guy that was, yeah. like, my hero. And it, it didn't even make him a villain. It just made him, like, uh, an antagonist for the episode with, like... Like, hey, you owe me money. But then Fluttershy, you know, is like, eh, fuck you. I didn't appreciate your service. All sh all Fluttershy does is, like, learn from this guy, become, like, an alpha herself. And then he, and he, and he's like, yeah, you know, okay, all right. You, I, I'm with you. So, like, he respects the code. He's not even a villain. He's a good guy. He is a good guy. Okay, I'm getting too deep into this thing. I fucking love that Go episode. watch Keg Reviews. Go watch Keg Standard down. Reviews. Uh, putting your hook down on TBAP. Yeah. Uh, it's actually a great video that I love. I did a song for it. and two... Two or three songs. I did that, three that songs. That video is kind of the precursor to what would be best guy ever. Like, yep. It's the it's the first example of you going way the fuck overboard. That's for right. The production of a video, which would be continued in Phantom Reviews. Uh, way overboard. We man, Ben's fucking animations and like the song. <laughs> oh man, that was a fucking crazy ride. It took us like six months to finish that video. I think. Yeah. I which remember. would establish a pattern for me, which would be very destructive. But make yeah. some decent stuff. But in, in any case. So, Ben convinced me to watch My Little Pony. I did, and I got into it. And I would watch it, like, at work when I was supposed to be working at this other shitty job, and I would just watch My Little Pony instead, and it was great. Uh, I remember I was watching it when the Boston, Ma the Boston Marathon bombing happened. I was watching some My Little Pony and was like, <laughs> I don't give a fuck about them. I'm taking with Rarity and the girls. This is way more important. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> And long story short, like, so we, we, we were goofing around, and then eventually Ben came home, and Ben suggested one day, like, yo, I've been watching this big faggot, like, Digibro, and, like, other guys, or Digibrony, and Brony Curious, and these other guys, and in, in fact, he showed me, um, the video that really was, made me, like, even interested in YouTube in general, was, um, uh, like, Horseshoe Reviews... God, what was it? It was like it was the so one. So he knew Jesse even before he showed any of this to you. Yeah, like the first video that I saw of like YouTube. This was like my introduction to YouTube was seeing Jesse's video. God, what the fuck was it? It's like magic. It's that. It's the season three opener, with the Crystal Kingdom, like the Magic Crystal oh, Kingdom the one. Oh, the Cold Corona. Episode. The Cold Corona video. That's the one where he crawls out of that fucking like. The, yeah. the Carousel Boutique thing. It's this like, is before Horseshoe Reviews. Yeah, this you're just right. Like, it wasn't even Horseshoe Reviews. It yeah. was when Jesse was doing his, his crazier shit before that. This was... That video was fucking magical. That it's video is so incredible. Great. Jesse, I love you, brother. You're, you're a hero. Um, but, uh, so I got... I realized that YouTube was a thing. We were both in a My Little Pony. Ben was back home. He suggested, hey, let's do a... Because we, we every time an episode would come out, we've been doing this our whole life. We would be, like, up late watching anime together and would talk about it for hours. He's like, yo, we're doing this again with My Little Pony. Let's make a motherfucking podcast. So we did. So we made TBAP episode one. And just like... That's two best brothers bitch, bitch about, about ponies. ponies. Yep. Yeah, don't tell mom, though, because that's a swear. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, right. So we, we did it. And I believe our first episode was just a still image and yes. shitty audio. And, like, and shitty art. And shitty art. Yeah. It's kind of shitty. The was, original designs are pretty shit. I remember Be uh, the keg had this amazing like number one finger that yeah. never got reused. What a tra what a tragic loss for that character. Could have had so much development with that number one finger thing. 
Uh, but yeah, I had the Kanye shades and Ben and Phantom Horn. Uh, it was it was good times. But like, what was what's interesting about T-Bab? Looking back at it now, is that that was literally the first video I ever made. Outside of like this, sh like this one, like video editing AMV I made, uh, like on a VHS tape back in high school, that is totally irrelevant. Um, I started learning YouTube at that moment, like editing and shit. And now here I sit, like three and a half years later, and I consider myself a pretty damn great edit boy. Yeah. And uh, yeah, le learned a lot of shit real fast. But like the way that TBAP evolved quickly, even at that time, it was as fast, fast as I could learn how to do new shit. And, you know, to give Ben credit, too, you know, he made new art. Yeah. We were grinding that shit. We were grinding that T-Bat wheel, like, I as mean, hard as I, we could. I'm sure I probably said this in Ben's interview, too. But, yeah. like, both, like, like the, the early T-Bat episodes were all submitted to me. Because I was running mm. uh, Equestria Daily's analysis thing at the time. You right. Know? I, I'd been well-established by this point. I'd been around for probably seven, eight, eight months. And I was pretty famous. Known so, for like, propagating heroes like Dr. Wolf. Among yeah. Among other legendary internet exactly. figures. Right. Okay. So I'm, I'm working for Equestria Daily. Season four has started. Mm. And people submit their videos to me. And the first T-Bap was submitted to me. And I thought, this is fucking dog shit. Sure. Because sure. the audio is so bad that I can't listen to it. Uh -huh. And I'm just like, who are these guys? Who are, what, what is who this are, shit? Who are these plucky young heroes? Yeah. Who do they think they are but then like literally two weeks later yeah yeah i get submitted another one that's got like vastly superior art and audio it's got like a whole intro segment that's hilarious yep, yep. it's got these legendary pony designs you guys had easily the best ocs in the fucking entirety Agreed. You're like including Our the oc game was on point in, if you include the like the whole like all the characters you guys made up see, for that sticky, one video, sticky situation. Like that, uh, yeah. those are horse fister. I'm I, look. Most of our audience doesn't know MLP. Yeah. they don't appreciate how meaningful this statement is. Yeah, because there are hundreds of thousands of yep. My Little Pony OCs, it's true. and there are some very creative people who made them. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of great ones. There are ones who have had whole fandoms you know like fan made ocs with fandoms right, exist right like like a snowdrop or something you know right yeah yeah you guys made the best ocs in the entire fucking fandom it's true i, I think and never the, got the credit you deserve for you know it. it was funny we never appeared in like those big group shots of everybody yeah. and it's entirely because we were like a little bit we were a little too original you know with our art like ben yeah beta we made a big mistake by not be playing it like exactly like everybody else was doing yeah so like including us somebody like eventually made like vectors but even then they never showed up in anything um uh yeah like ben's designs were like cartoony and like had their own style going on and they were i think that thing. was just because like this is a big part of how the horseshoe crew which yeah. later became the pcp came together is that we all respected one another's work, and right, I think right. a lot of uh, a lot of what we were like pissed off about at the time was that like you know I was famous, mm. but I had like a kind of squeaky clean character, which right. which when I eventually de like changed it, people were mad about. Yes, you know? they were. But like you guys never did the TBAP and and Jesse. We had a swear in our name, dude. Yeah, edgy. Well, and you guys, you know, you'd make constant misogyny jokes and shit. Yeah, like, especially me. And. Like, that kind of shit just didn't fly in that community, because there's a bunch of fucking autistic children who yeah, didn't true. want that, who, who just, like, couldn't parse what you was know, a joke and I, what was it. I always you know? thought, like, we had a certain atmosphere that didn't get as much shit. Like, I think the number one thing I ever got shit for was one time when I got really mad at... There was an episode where Pinkie Pie kept making Fluttershy cry, and yeah. I was like... I mean, I, I, yeah, I think it's, it's fairly in character, but, like, I was being like, oh, that Pinkie Pie is such a, like, fucking autistic piece of shit yeah. faggot and like it was the way that i like vindictively called her autistic yeah. the audience got really mad and i wonder why yeah, they'd be sensitive why. about that word well like yeah. and that's the thing like even for me like i liked you guys' stuff yeah. like you guys and jesse um but even i would like hesitate to post it on equestria daily because i knew oh, really? i'd get shit for it sure, you know like sure. it, i'd gotten shit for my own videos for saying that Dude, kind of the stuff, whole you know? point of the phantom horde character is specifically to mock transsexual people yeah like that's what well, the character gender is people uh, right transgender yeah 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 like i mean yeah and and like MLP fandom was highly steeped in like. And by the way, we have no hatred for them. We just no. think it's funny. It's this whole. Yeah. It's just hilarious. Well, that's the thing. Like like MLP fandom was highly steeped in like neoliberalism right. and a lot of social justice stuff. And like we're not even really like idealistically opposed to that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah. We just 
are willing to make fun of shit, and those like a lot of them aren't. And that's it the just big comes problem down with that whole movement. The, yeah, and that's why like promoting TBAP and promoting Endless Jess uh, or Drowning in Horseshoes was yeah. always really difficult for me. Because, like, I couldn't bring people to that. And it would affect the way people looked at me, too. Sure, people would be like, sure. oh, why are you associating with them? You know, I'm like, well, because I think it's funny. But, yeah. like, and, and because I'm working for Equestria Daily, who now I have to represent their interests and stuff. Right. And, like, when we would do, yeah, when, when people would draw those crowd shots, like, they'd leave out you guys, I think, for that reason. You know, like, I think some of them knew mm. about you guys and just mm. didn't like you because you were transgressive. Well, okay, you know, you know what? Entirely possible. Um, I'm I'm sticking with my theory that it's because our art designs were too different. Because these I mean, people did not have th- standards. There was a lot of those like big Dude, crowd they put, shots, like fucking fifty subscriber yeah, nobody. Exactly, in those. there'd be literal nobodies in these, and yet uh, drowning in horseshoes and yeah. T-Bap wouldn't be there. And yeah. and sometimes Gibbon was, you know, sometimes he was in there way more than the rest of us. Yeah, yeah. and that's he was never aggressive. He was never like. You know, offensive or anything. I think it was he, mostly that you guys yeah. were offensive to the bronies, and they're hey, maybe like maybe literally a bunch of fucking pussies about it. You know, like because they really were. Like I knew people who were extremely squeaky clean who didn't even like who even had a darker sense of humor but wouldn't show it. Yeah, you know, and like, like I mean, you saw what happened to for me. Example. Well, well, she's. Mm, I don't know anything other, about her. No. <laughs> <laughs> she. Uh, <laughs> I like that one song she made. At whatever. Yeah. Um. Anyway. <laughs> I got in a lot of trouble with her, and she blocked. She she literally told me to stop listening to her music. I remember that. Yeah, interesting. interesting. Uh, Yo, white people, don't listen to my music. <laughs> Hashtag cats millionaire. Yeah, um, she wasn't black, but <laughs> I'm just I'm making a joke. <laughs> I know. I, like that rapper who told white people not to listen to his music. Kanye whatever. West. Not didn't Kanye he do West. That? Was that a, like you? You made a thing about this. Like there was some. Oh, rapper, Milo. Milo. Well, he didn't say white people don't listen to it. He just gets mad at white people who say nigga, even if it, it's oh. like singing along to his songs. Right. You know, nigga, fuck off. Yeah. Um. So, <laughs> but yeah, like I really think. Like, you saw what happened when I made my pony start smoking. Yeah. Like, people Just flipped smoking. shit on Is me. Is that weed? Is, oh my <laughs> god, cigarettes are evil! Fuck! But, but this is a children's show, and what if children watch your videos and get influenced to smoke? Like, I'm not even portraying uh. it as a good thing that my character smokes. I'm portraying him as, like, a half-dead, tired, don't-be-like-me kids people, abomination. People don't want to look into, like, the whole... When it comes to anything like questionable or even slightly edgy, they're not interested in context. No, they're just. Inter- I mean, it's like the Anita Sarkeesian thing. Like, if you're showing X, you're supporting X, whether yeah. you say so or not. Like, context is irrelevant. If you show like a sexy woman, that's you. You know, just like whatever you're objectifying or whatever. It's that same argument. It doesn't make any sense. It's yeah. ridiculous. Though th- it's only ridiculous. Okay, you know what? Maybe I maybe Anita's right. If everyone is really stupid, and if nobody's yeah. thinking about it, maybe that's the problem. Which is not the case. Which I don't think is actually the case, if the people most, are paying attention. I think most people who take offense to things are taking offense on behalf of other people right. yeah. who aren't actually being affected. You know, How far in are, are we on this? Two and a half hours. Two and a half? Yeah. All right, so you you started up TBAP. Yep. How did that go? Because you guys got... That channel was not unsuccessful. No, we all. We In got, fact, it took a long time for you to pass TBAP on as best guy ever. I just did it recently. Yeah. Right before, like the Galka video, I finally reached my goal of seventeen thousand subscribers, which was a big deal for me because I never uh, got there with uh, with TBAP, and I was always like, "Oh, we're so close." I mean, it it was a meme number because like it was just like, "Oh yeah, now we're getting like the next thousand. Now we'll get the next thousand. And it happened to be that TBAP never quite got to seventeen thousand. And it was always like, ah, shit, I don't fuck, I want, I want to do that someday. So I finally did it, and then Galco happened immediately, and the channel doubled in size within a week. Yeah. And, That's how uh, it tends to happen. And then Mia Mafava happened, and it, I mean, it didn't, like, have an explosion, but I've gained, like, 4,000 subscribers or so over the course of Mia Mafava or something. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I, I know I've got a long way to go, but this is, like, huge progress for me. And my Patreon is, like, exploding a little bit right now, so it's everything great. It, all, all good things are happening right now to me. But, uh, but you know, for, for TBAP itself, you know, it was, TBAP was great. It was another, like, confidence-boosting thing. Because, you know, again, I was a different man than I had been, like, a couple years ago. I was, I was more confident and willing to do things uh, that were, you know, would have scared me off, you know, in my childhood. But uh, it was doing it, getting some success, getting some positive feedback uh, was really good for me. And especially at that time in my life where I was working these shitty jobs and, uh, 
you know, didn't have my degree, was like student loan debt, having to pay that shit off all the time, like no money, living with my parents, you know, no girls, you know, at all at this time, and, um, yeah, it was just really shitty, but, uh, TBAP gave me something to feel good about in my life. I was really achieving something that 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 was making an impact. It was making people happy. It was earning me even a little bit of money on the internet. It was amazing to me. It blew my mind. And uh, I was able to work with Ben, which was usually very good. Because Ben is a very competent guy, but needs, a, needs the spurs to put to him on occasion. Uh, so, you know, it just was a very positive change to, to get... I don't know, to, to really understand that, like, yeah, if I set my mind to something, I can fucking do it. I can achieve this shit, which I'd already kind of understood, like, with the whole, you know, girl thing in college. It was just, like, this was, like, a professional validation, and it was at this point that I was starting to wonder, like, I really had those thoughts of, like, like, what is the point of, like, all this school shit I've done? Like, why have I spent all this time slaving away at something that I don't even want to do? Like, I, I so easily just fell into this, like, you know, career, quote-unquote career at this point, uh, that, like, I'm passionate for and I love doing and is earning me money and could theoretically be a way to live. And, like, the I, I talk about how, like, the most productive time in my life, now it's Mia Mafava, but, like, forget, uh, before Mia Mafava happened, like, and I'm actually, I'm a ridiculously hard worker on my videos, it's just they really do take that long to come out because I have to work all the time. Uh, and I have to, like, go to the gym and shit that takes up time, but, like, every Saturday was New Pony Day, and it's time, nothing else matters. All that matters is that we get the fucking pony episode done, and people probably don't remember this, but we consistently were the first review out on the Saturdays, yeah, like, despite being also the best review. We did it every week. I mean, our only competition was guys like, uh, I mean, like Dr. Wolf, we we'll get mean, his out real gr quick. Granted, you had the advantage of it was unscripted. But True. like, like, yeah. We would I have mean, our intro skits and shit, though, and animations yeah. and all that stuff going on. But you did those in the week animations. leading up to it. Well, the well. animations we had to do during the thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, what, what's your point? Like, yeah, we planned, dude. Well, we just, planned. We were saying, playing the game. I'm just saying that, like, it was impressive, but like... yeah. You know, there was like a certain team of people who was the day ones, and it was like me, you, you mm. guys, and Tom were always like yeah. the first, the first starting line. Like these guys are gonna be out, and you'd always beat me, right? Just by virtue of being on script. Like if I hadn't oh, written I my this videos, is a personal <laughs> ego thing for you. I see. Okay. Well, I'm not. I'm not saying I wasn't even really <laughs> trying for like being first. Uh -huh. I was always just trying to have that day. That was our goal. So like, goal. oftentimes I would like you know dick around for a few hours or something yeah, but yeah. like i i think in terms of like like we were probably working at the same speed i just was writing out all the videos you know sure sure <laughs> we we had some advantages you know we had two people doing the work right um etc et and yeah we like but is that uh, the fact that we worked on our intros and outros yeah. ahead of time I think the intros is and outros a were magical. good thing about us. Yeah, yeah. like we, we worked really hard and on it's them. Not, like, it's not easy to get all those fucking poses. No, it's not. Organized. Plus, like the original art Ben would generate, like to this day, I still love some of those. Like, do you remember the one of uh, like it, Love Lesson Zero? For one of our fucking intros, we Ben made an, a, like, a full like fake faux uh, love, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, like harem... Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Fucking visual novel is the word I'm looking for. He made like yeah. a love visual novel intro thing with like, uh, like it was Keg as like a character was playing like some guy who was hoping to date this girl, and then like Spike was like a badass, and Twilight was uh, honestly, like a nice girl. Like, it was nuts. To our audience, if any of you have never seen any of TBAP because you yeah. don't care about MLP, it, it, I feel like we've done a real disservice all of us in the in the procrastinators to ourselves mm -hmm. by like insisting that our MLP days are like a meme that are in the past and we're like ashamed because we, we all did a lot of great work back then that yeah. people should go back and see Phantom Reviews like, that is great Tech Reviews is great don't even don't even wa like go to the go to TBAP and just watch the intros to all the videos because yeah. the intros were fucking awesome and there's, the outros great there's too. one where it was like it was live action phantom horn trying to draw something and he had like actual hooves. We worked so hard on that. How yeah. did you do the hooves? Okay, what we did was like I think that was my idea. We like I, I had seen some video of like someone with hooves and I was like, I've got an idea. Let's do like a live action drawing thing. So um 
We ju- we bought some hooves. Like ju- they're like you can just buy online like these like rubbery horse hooves like glove type things that go all the way up to like your elbow. Uh-huh. And um, we we spray painted them blue. We just spray painted them blue yeah. so they'd look like phantoms. And uh, and then we just we, this was we used like our setup for filming that thing was so fucking jank. We taped like one of our like Sam- Samsung Galaxy twos to like the top of a thing and like filmed. Uh, downward and like we had to do so many takes of all that shit like trying to get it just yeah. right I mean, and, essentially uh, the joke is that he tries to draw but he has hooves so he spills ink all over the, the joke is that Phantom constantly con- Phantom is doing like a how to draw he's fucking up everything horribly and then somehow at the end he ends up with this like beautiful drawing yeah. it's like and that's how you do it that's how you fucking do it yeah uh, great skit love it yeah these guys would put out like the the opening skits of TBAP were literally better than anything else happening in the pony community, unless it was from <laughs> like me or Jesse or yeah, Hero, sure, sure, or Gibbon. And I'm not saying it was worse than any of those, uh-huh. just that those were also not terrible. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and Jesse's stuff, like I've I actually have had people tell me that they have finally gone and watched the horse the horseshoe reviews and been like, holy they shit, they are that like, good. They, they are, are legitimately good. incredible. Don't even watch My Little Pony; it doesn't matter. Yeah. just go watch the horseshoe reviews, watch the intros to T-Bab, uh, watch yep. watch at least like Gibbon finale or something or his last one where Gibbon takes oh, right. sails off and dies. Except now he's back; he's a pirate boy again. Yeah, and uh, I'm sure I had something worthwhile. Who knows? Yeah, I'm sure you did. <laughs> Something that's <laughs> worth revisiting. Uh, uh, yeah, it was it was it was good times, and we, you know we we picked out the other people that we recognized as not incompetent, yeah. and actually with interesting things to say, and we eventually got together, and uh, you know, and I mean just to tell the story again because it's because it's fun and I like it. Um, I think like the first time we interacted was when like uh, Ben and I were big fans of all you guys, yeah, um, and specifically. Jesse and Gib were our favorites, and we respected yeah. you as an authority figure, and, and you know enjoyed your content. But we we just liked the personality they showed of like the goofy shit, yeah. as opposed to, like the inform- information. Because I'm stuff. Not, I was never funny. Yeah, my yeah, videos that's true. were like were like really fucking. We, we came to your videos analysis. when you we were like, okay, let's get serious about what the fuck this episode's <laughs> yeah. about. Uh, <laughs> Jesse was the one who was making like. Like, Jesse's content, it didn't matter that it was about My Little Pony. It right. was just, like, these masterful, like, films that he yep. was putting together, you know? So, uh, one day, like, Ben and I, the first thing we did was we decided, like, I, I came up with this goof of, like, let's say for, for like, President's Day is coming up. Uh, let's pretend it's Valentine's Day in this intro, and we'll say we're doing a special love episode with Digibrony. And so we, uh, we did this whole gag where you don't show up, and then at the very end... Uh, it's this whole, like, crazy, like, zooming out, weird, high-concept thing where, like, the whole episode takes place constantly zooming out from within the universe, deep within Digibrony's eye, and then, like, at the end, like, we've zoomed out all the way, and you appear, and you go, it stinks, and then, my little pony, the end of the episode. Yeah. God, it was a fucking great bit. It was so good. I'm so proud of that one. The editing yeah. was tight and perfect at that moment. Um... So, and, yeah, I don't know, whatever. Like, we, we you recognize at that point. And then Gib, actually, this was before that. Gib made, like, a, a thing where he uh, showed us in, like, his big analysis roundup videos. He yeah. animated us a little. We love that. Uh, but then eventually, I don't even know how, we... Oh, oh of course, we did the, uh, the Q&A. And the yeah. Q&A, and we all... He found out that we loved you guys. And at some point, there was a conversation where we all decided to do a horse cast. Blah, blah, blah. We all got together and started doing stuff and became friends and... Yeah. Just kept doing that shit. The, we, we're we rushing are. through this part because we've told the story so many, so many fucking times. times. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Like, I, uh, hopefully, this isn't your first uh, PCP interview or episode yeah. because, like, we we've literally <laughs> told this fucking story of how we all met dozens of times. Certainly, dozens of times. Yeah, yeah. And um, that's showbiz. How far in are we? We are. Two hours, 38 minutes. 38 minutes? 38. Feels like, feels like we've reached feels, three hours. I know, uh, it feels I'll just long. keep asking you about shit, I guess. Um, Is there anything else I can talk about? Like, yeah, well, so, so TBAP, you guys kept doing it for... We uh, stuck with I, it for a while. I, I want to yeah. emphasize uh, this as well, that when season four ended, me and Hippo were done. Like or Gibbon at the time, mostly yeah. I think like, they did like a couple more Gibbon, here there. Gibbon's like his final video came out like a couple months later, I think. Yeah. But after that, he, yeah, he did like the the one about Klopp or whatever, and one about Diamond Tiara, Which and that was he doesn't about like. It. I love that video. I think it's great. 
Um, I think he just doesn't like the way it, like people react to it or something. Yeah, like that's that. probably like um, Boys in the Well or something. But he he went on for a little while, but didn't really go farther. I quit in like after season four. I hardline stopped covering My Little Pony, stopped watching it, never he talked about it again. Left the fandom that piece I, of I did. Shit. I I actually. How dare you! So for those who don't know, this is a huge meme yeah. in the My Little Pony fan. Not even a meme. Something they take seriously. Like it's an offense. You can yeah. committed a crime. Well, it's, it's it's like you either are in or out. There is You're no like... You're either an ally or an enemy. There's no like waning interest or like, hey guys, I just want to work on other stuff. It's like if you're not still producing My Little Pony content, then yep. you have left the fandom. And that's the phrase they use. Yep. And like, it, yeah, it's like a huge offense, like to to leave the fandom. It's very silly. It's very. So silly. I, I left the fandom. Um, and Gibbon wasn't really doing much, but like, Jesse took a whole fucking year putting together Horseshoe Finale. Like he wasn't done until 2015. Yep. And then you guys came back for season five sure and did. did the whole fucking season in podcast form, just without the animations. I was day. already on the fence. Like there was yeah. much discussion as to whether or not to even do it. Cause we had like other ideas. And the only we reason like, you did was cause the Patreon. Was cause still we had active. Patreon. It's like, yeah. I mean, and Ben was a big driving force for, uh, that stuff, uh, wanting to do it for the money. And, you know, nothing against him, I understand, but... Uh... But, like, season season four ended, there was mm. a huge gap between season four and five, yeah. and that's when you guys got out the, the like, big gun videos that, that you Is did. that when we did, um... Phantom Reviews Phantom had to reviews? have been that time. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. Um... Because, you know, you guys were working on, like, huge projects that were, like, kind of operating in the background of right. the, the, the the weekly reviews. Which, again, come together in, like, an hour. You know, like, right. we, we all were, like, it, it's funny to think that, like, we're currently in this period of, like, let's get back to making smaller, easier videos. When we all launched our careers by doing videos that we made in literally a couple well, you hours. Know, that's you the know? fascinating thing about it that I think about a lot. It's, and I'm, I'm always, I'm sort of lamenting. To myself, the fact that the the pony days were perfect for me in terms of yeah. like the the time crunch, because having that deadline of get it out as soon as fucking possible, you got to meet this goddamn deadline, be the yeah. first. Having that goal in my framework of like how we were making videos was so helpful for a guy like me who does have a tendency to get lost in the details and obsess over yeah. little things that ultimately uh, just to have diminishing returns. Having that crunch time was so good and that's why i describe it as like the most productive time in my life like working yeah. on those except for me and Mafava. that was the best yeah me and Mafava unquestionably is like vastly more i cut productive. down on like this is the first time in my life i really have cut into my sleep and my like ability to live to make content in a yeah. big way and like we're talking like two hours of sleep a night and uh it was hard yeah. and I, I fueled myself with coffee and caffeine and like God, I don't know what my work guys were thinking of me. I mean, I did yeah. the work, but uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I Maybe it was okay. I really don't remember. <laughs> Hopefully it was okay and it wasn't a big deal. I just, I often think about like, what would my coworkers think if they, you know, knew, knew what you were really all this shit? And doing. like, I have, I regret it, but I have told them that like I do this shit and I have shared like the channel name. Just because, like, what are you going to do if they's like, hey, what's your channel? What are you going to say? Oh, I don't want to talk about it. Eh, you got to, I don't know, you just got to pony it up. Yeah. Hey, I love little, My Little Pony. Um. So, I wonder if any of them are watching. I wonder if any of them, like, I'm walking around in my work, right? All these guys are working on software development and shit. They're, they're thinking about, like, enterprise-level systems deploying to, like, various companies, like fucking Boeing and Honeywell, like, big defense contractors and shit. I'm thinking about, like, I got to go home... And work on this, like, anime review and, like, tell, you know, like, 17,000 people and now, like, getting close to 40,000 people how good fucking Angel's Egg is. And, like, yeah. how fucking how, Go how great Geass that, is written like shit. How great this one obscure boss in this new Kingdom Hearts spinoff That's an important video. Fucking game is. That, I like that video. That was good. That was a, That's a message that I'm really glad I got to get out. God, thank God for me a map of a enabling me to get out all these things that I had bottled up. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm so excited about is yeah. that me and Mafava, to me, the funny thing about it is that to you, it was put in as little effort as possible, but what it really represents mm. to me is a middle ground. Um, that is my, that is my low effort, you know, yeah. the middle ground. That's, that, that's as low effort as I can go. It's, yeah. It's I a middle ground rock. because yeah. 
for me, my content has gotten to a point where it's all either um, a good enough script that Davu can do it, yeah. or I'm going to do it, and therefore it's going to be nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, like, like I am not going to do anything with this, right. it, except for what is required for it. It's not that uh, my content is, like, all exactly the same. Sometimes something different or interesting happens, but, like... Me and Mafava kicked it up a little. Like it, yeah. it, I look at it and I think, okay, this is like what I'm doing. But if I actually thought about each video and like what I could, mm-hmm. basically, if I thought of it as a video you can make in a day instead of a video you can make in an hour, I was explaining yeah. this to you that right. like, to me, there's the two kinds of videos I make are a written video which takes a day or two and then it's out of my hands, right. or right. a vlog which is it has to be done in one sitting. Mm. You know, like one concentrated burst and I can do four of them in a day. And Mia Mafava to me was like, oh, this is what the middle of that would look like. Of like, yeah, yeah. I can spend a few hours on a video. And I mean, I've done stuff like this before. I don't know if you ever saw my handfuls of Zen videos. Sure, I've seen those. Yeah, At least which, most of them. That's like very similar mindset to Mia Mafava, which is mm. like, it's it's unscripted. The people want more of those, you know. The people I want to make more them. of those. Yeah, okay. And like, it's it's that combination of like unscripted, but there's lots of notes and there's a level of mm. editing to it, and there's like prep work to be done. It yeah, can it sounds... be done in a day, but it's you know, it's not something that's just fucking. I turned on a camera and then uploaded it, right? You know, and like, what was so exciting to me watching Mia Mafava was like, if like all I could think was if you put out just, I mean even four of these a month, yeah, like if you put. The level of effort that it took to make three Mia Mafavas into one video and release it once a week, this is the greatest channel of all time. <laughs> you know, like, one video a week at the level of three Mia Mafavas of effort. Uh, and, and you can do seven Mia Mafavas of effort in a week if you had to, but I, yeah. you're not going to time crunch yourself like that for yeah. the rest of your yeah. life. But if you left your job, you could Put that, seven Mia Mafavas of effort in a day. That's why it's really uh, not a joke. Like, what a big difference me leaving my job be will huge. really make. It, this is not a meme to trick people to get yeah. money out of you. It really will be a world-changing thing for my channel. And if you care about getting more content faster, that's the thing to do. That's like, to I, do. I hope people, like, really sit back. Uh, I know it's harder for the audience because they don't make videos to, yeah. like, fully process the difference here. But, like, Nate spent those those two months that that you worked on like the loose from the biscuit hammer video yeah. like i won't say you were working as much as you did during mia mafava That's but true. like that was consistent work every you never, night yeah. i worked every day my like my evenings were editing for two months that's what they were yeah and that video was you know it was overdone you right. shouldn't have spent that long on it agreed but, like, imagine... You can see the work that's in it, though. You can see yeah. it. Imagine, though, if you could have done that with... If you didn't have a, a day job, you could have done yeah. it in two weeks, you know? Yep. And with Mia Mafava, those 30 videos, like, you could have done... If you didn't have a day job mm. and you had done Mia Mafava exactly the same way, you literally could have done two months, like, yeah. you could have just cut out the time you spent at work and done another Mia Mafava in that time. Without and a it doubt. could have been two videos a day, and that could have been two months' worth of content. If you guys want to see Best Guy Ever stockpile, <laughs> like, you know, I mean, what? you? Let's say you didn't have to work for two months, and you mm-hmm. decided to do Mia Mafava-level videos all day, every day. Yeah. You're going to end up with, like, a year... In, let's say you stagger yep. the releases for once a week. You've got a year of videos in two months. You know, you know, I hear you on that. But you know, one thing that people don't really talk about as much that I I think a lot about when it comes to me and Mafava is how I really went out of my way to make it an event, to make it a spectacle. Yeah, that's that's my Huey's Law in action right there, which is great. Yeah, yeah like it's got its own theme song, it's got its own logo, it's got merchandise, it, and only you could deliver on that. Yeah, because. Um, I fall into this trap that I've talked about continuously, uh, and it's a real psychological principle that mm. if you talk about something you're planning to do, right, you're right. less likely to do it because it gives you the vindication of like, you know, just describing it makes it, you feel like you did it mm-hmm. and you don't fall into that. You talk I about stuff years in advance. Well, yeah, that's know? true. That's true. Like, I mean... We, I knew, I've known about your Ghost in the Shell video for two fucking years. I announced it two years ago, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I mean... I did not give up on it at all at that point. Yeah, Yeah. like, there's just this, this, 
somehow you are just disciplined in a way that you could... If I had announced me a Mafafa, I wouldn't have done it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I... As you may know, I did a whole month of a video every day, right. uh, October 2014, and I never mentioned what I was doing until, like, the last video. Really? Like, like huh. it, it, or it's towards the end. I did a video on the first three episodes of Shirobako, and I said, like, oh, as somebody who's been doing this deliberate one video a day all month, and here's the fucked up part. No one noticed I was doing it. <laughs> Not one commenter ever mentioned Isn't that, that I'd done a video every day all month. Between yours and mine, yeah. that, that difference right there. Just because mine were of such, like, my, my audience was, like, weird and in this transitional phase yeah. into anime. So, like, s some of the videos would be, like, the biggest video I've ever made. And yeah. then another one would have, like, 1,000 views, you know? Was, so, like, people just weren't seeing all of them. Was this because you were afraid that you might not, miss, miss, you know, miss a deadline or something? It was 100% that I was afraid if I talked about it, I wouldn't finish it. That's, okay. Because that had proven true every time I've ever talked about a project. I mean, because when... I'm, I'm with you on that, um, but uh, to focus on me, because my problems matter yeah. more than yours... Uh, this it, is your interview. That's right. <laughs> um, the, uh, like, my... The, the fear I had, which was definitely a fear... And of course, it, it's inevitable with this, is that I would fail, is that I would mess up. Yeah. I actually had some other ideas in mind beforehand that I floated around with a couple people just, just seeing well, what... Well, I, um, I think this is why you can do it and I can't, is because yeah. you're way more afraid of failure than I am. That's because true. Because what actually would have been the consequence of me and Matt of a failing? Me being embarrassed. Exactly. That's it. That's it. That's like, it. your audience would have been like, uh, well, he couldn't do it. What a what an asshole! Yeah, you know, like yeah. you would have felt like dumb for a couple days, maybe a couple weeks. I don't care about that. Like mm. I fuck up so frequently that it doesn't matter. Like I've I've got a <laughs> character as somebody who like you know it, like my audience literally doesn't expect me to finish anything that I start because mm. I've started mm. so many shows that, that just clear. die. Yeah. yeah. Um, but like for you, like just the sheer level of like I can't fail at this. Yeah, that's true. Carried it all the way through. Yep. And that's a good thing. I think it's a healthy mindset to have. If yeah. you, if if you're yeah. proud of the product and you know. And I always am. Uh, yeah. You look very tired. Um, I am somewhat tired. We're almost at three hours. Yeah. We can crank out a little more. <laughs> uh, Some of them are like a few minutes short of three hours. It doesn't have to be exact. I want three hours. God <laughs> damn it. Let's talk about... Um, I, I'm wondering if when, yeah. if somebody finally interviews me mm. in this series, like, are, is it going to be three hours or am I going to... Because there's like a thing Yours that, will be like everyone's to combine. We're talking yeah. like a 25-hour <laughs> interview here. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fucking epic. It would be epic. It, well, it really depends on who's interviewing me and how yeah. long are they willing to go. Maybe we could, you know, I, I was wondering about that. Maybe we could split it up. Everyone does a piece, you know. Oh, that'd be interesting. That'd be interesting, right? Yeah. Could all come with our questions. I feel so, like nobody's curious enough about me to want to do an interview. We know there. everything. You yeah, know? there's we'll, nothing left. I'll, we'll have to come up with something. Yeah. Um. What, um, what's your favorite anime? What's Why are you uh, asking me? What's I, your favorite anime? I'm filling time, Digi. Uh, you, want, you want me to go through? I, we're almost there. We can do it. I know your, <coughs> your favorite anime is Gurren Lagann. Your favorite manga is One Piece. Yeah. Um, your favorite movie mm. is American Beauty. That's true. That's true. You want to say anything? I'd be happy that? to. And uh, I think if anybody's seen American Beauty, you, you'd understand very much why. Um, it is a movie about casting off the shackles of societal expectations and like embracing your dreams is really what it's about and every character in the movie does that to an extent or like to in their own way for example i'm going to spoil this movie by the way so if you give a shit uh i'd highly recommend watching it so you know do whatever you want but so the main character kevin spacey um he wants to fuck his teenage daughter's hot ass uh like girlfriend like her her buddy and she's like captain of the cheerleading squad. She's like a model, uh, Mena Suvari, whatever, some famous actress. Like he wants to fuck this girl, and she's seventeen, eighteen, something along those lines. So she's pretty darn young. Um, and like he sets up his whole life uh, where he he did like so he worked this like shitty corporate job, and uh, he fucking hated it. It's actually very similar to Fight Club in a lot of ways. Like he just says fuck it one day, I'm done. And I, I'm you know it's slipping my mind right now because it's been a little while since I've seen the show. Um, why exactly he does it? 
I have to think about that. Oh, I remember. It's because he meets a new neighbor. A new ma neighbor moves to town, like the weird kid who gives him some weed. And he gets high, and he, he just has some revelation. You know what? Fuck this shit. I'm done. He quits his goddamn job um, in, a, in a brilliant way. Like, he, he literally says, like, to his boss, like, because they're doing, like, corporate restructuring, look, if you... I'm going to uh, quit now. Um, and if... I'm going to say that you asked me if you could blow me and sexually harass me uh, if you don't give me, like, a huge severance package. And, uh, oh, by the way, the movie starts with him just saying, like, as an announcer, I'm going to be dead in one year. So know that going in. That's just how it starts. Um, so he does this. Oh, and he also has, like, some information about, like, shady business dealings the company's been doing. Anyway, he, he finally, like, mans up and uses his leverage to fuck over this company that's been screwing him and not treating him, like, the way that he deserves to be treated. And um, he just, he pieces. And he leaves... And, like, now he's got, like, this money where he can just live on for, like, a while. He's got, like, a year's salary, which lines up perfectly with, like, the time he's going to die at the end. And he immediately goes and gets a shitty job at a burger joint just to get another job. Just because he's like, oh, I want to do something with my life. And so he starts working there because he wants a job with zero responsibility anymore. Like, this guy is just unburdening himself. That's what he's... He's unburdening himself with the shackles of, like... Of, of his job, and, like, then his family is another huge thing. So he's got his wife, Carolyn, and his daughter, June? Judy? Whatever. Um, and his wife is a frigid bitch uh, who is, like, just not... I don't know. She, they don't vibe, you know? They've grown apart over the years. They used to be really into each other. But, like... So, so he starts, like, exercising, right? He starts working out, and over the course of the, sh of the, of the year, he gets fucking fit. He gets swole to an extent, you know, as much as you can get in a year. Uh, and it's just, it's just about the self-improvement shit, right? Like, he, like, something happens to this guy, he has an awakening, he's like, you know what, fuck this, I'm gonna take charge of my life and actually go for the things I want. So, I think you can tell why something like that would appeal to me. But it's not just about that guy, because all the other characters do it too. Like, uh, Carolyn, his wife, she starts cheating on him, she starts having an affair, but... She is, like, so happy and empowered by it that, like, it's it's not good to cheat on people. But what she's realizing is, like, I have been unhappy in the situation I'm in. I need to do something. I need to, like, change. This has got to end. This is no good. And so she has her own little development arc uh, related around that. And the daughter, Judy, I believe it's Judy, like, you know, she's best friends with this girl that, like, her father lusts after. And she feels, like, so self-conscious -con and, like, thinks she's ugly and all this shit. And this, this new neighbor kid moves to town and, um... He, uh, 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 like, he introduces her. He, like, makes her believe that she's beautiful and, like, makes her feel happy for the first time in her life. And they fall in love and they, you know, do the do. And it's totally hot. She totally shows her tits. <laughs> Nate just mimed to be, like, finger I did the hole. finger. I did the hole in your finger and put your other finger through the <laughs> hole. Yeah, they did the sex. It was sick. Uh, and, uh, and it, it's, it's about, you know, it's about all that shit. It's about, like... Just saying fuck it and doing what you really want to do with your life and not giving a fuck right. what uh, anybody thinks anymore. That's what it's really about. Um, I can't remember I if it. I talked about this in Ben's interview or where I did, but yeah. like I, that I'm endlessly fascinated by the fact that your favorite movie is American Beauty mm -hmm. and his is American Psycho. That's one of my favorites, but that is yeah. interesting, isn't it? That they're my, both, like, not just that the titles are the same, but oh, like yeah. just the idea, like one is all about like, this vision of self-betterment and, like, right. becoming the perfect you. And the other one is about, like, this underlying insane neurosis behind everybody. Yeah. And I just feel like it matches up with both of you perfectly. Like, Isn't that interesting? You guys are... You and Ben, to me, have always been, like, m like mirror reflections of the same person. Like, like, a, mm. like a nega version. Yeah. Like, y like one of you is the nega version of the other. I don't know which. You know, because you know? Ben and I talk, and I, like, I've come to understand through a lot of our, like, the PCP conversations... I have this extremely optimistic view about people, how, like, yeah. I really think that humanity can, like, evolve and develop and change, and, uh, you know, like, there, there is a future for us if we work hard at it and, and, and strive to achieve it. Ben is extremely not like that. He's like, yeah. no, people are fucked, you know, why are we wasting and, our time with And it's shit? weird because that's, like, that seems like such a fundamental difference, yeah. but, like, aside from, like, the basic mindset you two have, mm -hmm. like, the actual, like, person is extremely similar yeah like the ways yeah. you talk and think and act are very similar but then like the mentality is totally different and like hmm. almost opposed maybe it goes to show that like because ben and i you know we grew up together exposed yeah. to all the same shit for the most part that like that kind of that part of your brain like your 
your fundamental like psychological and not psychological uh, philosophical approach to like yeah. the way you live maybe it's less impactful on your personality than yeah. we would assume you know maybe we are a little more divided in our brains than we think yeah maybe it's maybe maybe you have the same left brain but totally different right brains or whatever the fuck yeah maybe you know? that, that's Nobody fucking science me on that. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just spitballing philosophical. And, and by the way, I just wanted to say that at the end of American Beauty, um, what what is the best thing about that movie is that the way it ends is 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 wonderful. It, it ends with so at, you know at the beginning of the of the movie, Kevin Spacey says like I'm going to be dead in a year. Here's like the story of that year. So all these crazy things happen, like, everybody changes their life, uh, all this crazy improvements are happening, um, and Kevin Spacey at the end, through some shenanigans that are just too complex to go into, um, he ends up getting murdered by his next-door neighbor. Okay, well, just, his next-door neighbor is, like, the father of the new kid who's, like, who's changed everybody's life. That guy is, like, a military dad, but he's actually gay, and he's been repressing it, like, his entire life, and over the course of the movie, you find out that, like, oh, wow, this guy's actually gay, and, like, on this last night, um... He just, he's, like, feeling really vulnerable because his son is going to run away with the daughter. Like, they've had this gigantic fight. Uh, so he just walks over to his neighbor. Like, he ends up at Kevin Spacey's garage. And he's just, like, it's, it's raining. And he's, like, Ugh, what the fuck's happening? And Kevin Spacey's just, like, hey, come in. No, it's okay, man. What's, what's, I'll take care of you. What's going on with your life? And they, like, he ends up kissing him. And so, like, it's that, it's at that moment that the, uh, the, the colonel or whatever realizes, like, Someone knows. Someone knows my fucking secret now. And, and long story short, like, so he comes over. He uh, kills Kevin Spacey. He just shoots him in the back of the head from behind. But, and, and what's what's cool about it is, like, all these characters are set up like they could be the one who killed Kevin Spacey. Like, his daughter yeah. kind of has a reason to do it because, like, she's going to run away and, like, he might try to stop her. Uh, and the wife actually has a gun and is headed home because, like, she's fed up with, like, the stuff that he's been doing to, like, get back at her for cheating on him with that other guy. Um... So he gets killed by by the next door neighbor guy, and but like it's the way that he dies, uh, and the the film you know really focuses on this. Like he's looking at like a picture of his family, specifically I think of his little daughter when when she was a little girl, and he's just like so overjoyed that he was able to experience like the life of his of his um, of his daughter and like his wife when they were when they were in love, and like he he gets shot and he's dying. And, like, the, the characters, like, they, they come in and they see him dead, but they look at him and he's smiling. He's smiling. And there's this speech at the end of how, like, when you're dying, it's not like the lights go out instantly. It's that all the experiences of your life, like, stretch out like a vast ocean. And you just witness them as they're passing you by. And it, it goes on to an infinite degree. So it's almost like you never actually die. It's just like your existence continues forever. And, like, the takeaway from that is just, like, that's the value that life has and don't waste it on bullshit that you don't give a fuck about. You know, do things that are meaningful to you and, and you find value in and bring you joy and legitimate, you know, satisfaction. And, uh, you know, as a guy who lived like a little faggot bitch for a long time in his life and then something changed and I decided to, to do things differently, you know, guy, things like that, guys like Kamina who just do whatever the fuck they want to do and don't give a shit about the consequences, even though I'm not that guy... I, uh, I I really want to be, and I work to be more like that. There you go. That's me. Sick. It's the best guy ever. Gains, bruh. Are we at three hours yet? We're past three hours. We're at 3.02. Ay, we did it. We did ay, it. A full analysis of American Beauty took us over the <laughs> Yes, it mark. did. Like, literally, you could that probably... Could have been a video about You that. could repackage that as a Mia Mafava. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. <laughs> a a, a Gia Mafava June yeah. or something, yeah. All right, well, well, God may won't fucking end. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was thinking with a J, but that that works. So, out. Someone had pointed out in the comments on the uh, mm. the um, Arrow manga video that we did last night that it's yeah. like like literally the night after BMFF, so it basically isn't even over. I know that like, I like I said in the last video, like yo, uh, yeah, I probably won't even take a day off, and so I didn't, and yeah. we. Uh, or maybe that was like actually a day later, but whatever. Nor have you. This is also. And yeah, here we are again. See, I'm not quitting people. I'm no. the real deal. I'm committed. Neither. We're not capable. 
Like I'm this not... is this is why you should be supporting both of us on Patreon. Right. We are human content machines. We don't have other purposes in this world. That's exactly correct. This is the correct. only thing we know how to do. I have eliminated all other distractions in my life deliberately yeah. so that I can focus on doing the thing that I have found brings me my satisfaction and my joy, just yeah. like Mr. Kevin Spacey would want from American Beauty. Yeah, and if you like listening to me and Nate talk on this these bullshit podcasts yeah. get nade's patreon up to a point where he feels comfortable moving out yeah maybe he and i will uh more successfully than than i did with ben and devu not that i had ever really planned those two to be like my my guys that i was going to do stuff with yeah but me and you have a lot of ideas of what we could do if we lived close together we sure do so uh move nate and i uh nearer Yes, you know, nearer, nearer. Yes. Not, not in the same house. And you know what? I, I'm done uh, with that life. <laughs> yeah, Ben is a lazy piece of shit. <laughs> but, and but you know, uh, I might be willing to indulge him and just move to wherever he is to get him involved. Atlanta's in not a bad place. Yeah, and yeah. he wants us all to go there, and I wouldn't mind. Like I, I resent him for forcing me my whole life to just go along <laughs> with his pace because he is the lazy piece of shit, and if I want him involved, I have to slave around what he wants. But, you know, in this case, it might actually work out pretty nice. Yeah. So, hey, maybe that'll happen. Yeah. Or Hash- somewhere else, Hashtag whatever. get us all somewhere. Yeah. Hashtag <laughs> buy me out, nigga. Yeah. Yeah. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thanks, guys. Hope you enjoy. Look forward to Tom, Mage, and maybe me in the future. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Bye, guys.